The homestand continues under cloudy skies in St. Louis. The Cardinals hosting the Pirates. Game two of a three-game series here this afternoon. And the Cardinals have won four straight. We've had some rain in the area, but the tarp is off. Jake Westbrook getting ready for first pitch. He's had trouble against the Pirates before. Can he turn that trend around here this afternoon? Game two, right around the corner on Fox Sports Midwest. here at home, and that includes today's starter, Jake Westbrook. Jake had a shutout against the Cincinnati Reds back on April the 10th. We know he's a ground ball specialist, but he's been racking up some strikeouts on top of it. This guy, if he can keep the ball in the strike zone, he'll get those ground balls and should have a winner. He has had his problems against the Pirates, one in seven lifetime. Looking for career win number 100 today. Shelby Miller, a part of that very good rotation. We'll look at the offensive side of the Cardinals when we come back.
both sides of the plate against the Pirates in 1951. The last time a Cardinal did that until yesterday, and it was Carlos Beltran. It was the 35th time that Carlos has had a multi-home run game. His career home run total is up to 340. He was sick on Thursday. Yesterday, he visited the kids at Cardinal Glennon, and they inspired him to have the great effort last night. We'll hear more from Jim Hayes. Carlos Beltran, homers from both sides of the plate. 35th multi-homer career uh, game in your career. 12 for 35 on the road trip. You had a couple of homers on the road, a couple more tonight. Is that just a sign that you're feeling real comfortable? Well, before I talk about me, I would like to say something first. I would like to dedicate this victory and my two homers to all the kids at Carnal Glennon Hospital. You know, I went to visit them this morning, and, you know, I know you guys are battling the fight. I just want to encourage you guys to stay strong. And, and continue to fight. You guys are warriors. You know, talking about myself now, I have to say that, you know, right now I feel good at the plate. Right now seeing the ball good and I'm making good contact. You guys are going to score a lot of runs, but some of the guys in the lineup haven't hit their stride. Do you anticipate that's coming around shortly? Well, right now, you know, I, I would like to say that, you know, our offense is, uh, you know, we have no doubt that, you know, if the pitchers give an opportunity to, you know, to win ball games, we're going to score. There's going to be days where probably we're going to get shut down because we're going to face good pitchers. But, uh, you know, we're confident about ourselves right now. Tenth time you've uh, homered in a game from both sides of the plate. Do you take a little extra pride in that, doing it from both sides? Well, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm just blessed being able to, to, to play this game and being a switch hitter and being able to do what I do. Uh, like I said, you know, the glory of the owners for God. One of the things that you guys have been getting consistently is good pitching. You got it again tonight. Lance Lynn was very good. I mean, our signing rotation is just uh, its amazing right now. He's really giving us an opportunity uh, to win ball games. They're keeping us there in every single ball game. We feel like, uh, you know, we have lost a uh, few, but, uh, you know, every time the starting go out there, they're, they're really throwing seven, eight strong innings for us. Nice of you to give the shout out to the kids and thanks for the time. Thank you. All right, Carlos Beltran got to send it back to you. A nice story from Carlos Beltran adding to the Cardinal tradition. More from Bush Stadium, closer to first pitch after this. Yes, and Jake Westbrook, a big part of that. He pitches better here at home, but he's got to cut down on the walks, keep the ball in the ballpark, and use that sinker. Cool temperatures. First pitch. Next.
a reminder from Budweiser. Great times are waiting, designate a driver. See your Mid-America Chevy dealer or log on to stlchevy.com. Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers, number one for quality tires and expert auto service. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And buy Steak and Shake, just no equal. Welcome back to Bush Stadium. The Cardinals have taken the field in their alternate Saturday jerseys. Just about ready to get underway. Game two of a three-game series. The Cardinals took game one here yesterday behind Lance Lynn. Here's a look at the Pirates lineup. Starling Marte, Jose Tabata, and Andrew McCutcheon are one, two, three. Tabata, a late replacement for Snyder. Jones, Angie Alvarez in the middle. Russell Martin, Clint Barmas, and A.J. Burnett round out the Pirates' order. And here's a look at the Cardinals defensively, brought to you by Dobbs, Holiday J, and Beltron in the outfield. Carpenter gets to start at third today. With Cosma and Descalzo up the middle, Alan Craig plays first, and Yadier Molina, the gold lover, will catch Jake Westbrook. Well, Jake Westbrook is looking for win number 100 in his career. He's had his problems with Pittsburgh. Last July 1st was the first time he defeated them. He's 1-7 lifetime against the Buckos. And our game's first pitch right down central. Strike one to Starling Marte. Westbrook 1-1 one one on the season. Slider misses low. Jake had that game washed out in Pittsburgh, which was not a very good start there. But other than that, Jake's been terrific. Well, he's been outstanding. And as you said, that game, he was on the winning side, but it was about the second inning when the Reigns came. And that was last night's starter, Jonathan Sanchez, who has been suspended for six games, appealing that. And Jake, so they were happy, but... Jake really is, for whatever reason, when he was with Cleveland, he just didn't like that Pirate uniform. They beat him up pretty good. Pirate manager Clint Hurdle tossed out yesterday along with Sanchez. Two hopper to the right side. And Daniel Descalzo throws out Marte. And that's the first time that Marte has been retired in five games. Leading off the game, he's been very good in the first inning. And another Jake Westbrook ground ball. Yeah, great. Westbrook, since he was acquired by the Cardinals, has had the best ground ball percentage in baseball. More than 70 percent of the time, he will get a ground ball. Facing Jose Tabata, he gets that ground ball, knocks it down, and throws him out. Our Toyota keys to the game really involve both of our pitchers. A.J. Burnett for the Pirates and Jake Westbrook. Highest ground ball percentage since the beginning of last year. They're both on that list of top five. And Jake, you see that uh, since he's been acquired is 74.1 with his two ground ball outs here. Add a little bit to that. Wainwright on that list with A.J. Burnett. Is that a surprise to you? Wainwright? Yeah. Yes and no. You know, I think he's... It's surprising because that said, according to the beginning of last year, when he was still coming back from Tommy John surgery. But when Rain Wainwright is right, you know, he does get a lot of ground ball outs. Andrew McCutcheon, very good center fielder for the Pirates, 0 for 3 here yesterday. And on Thursday, he snapped an 0 for 17, so not off to his typical blistering start. 1 and 1, the count to him. Some people connected with the Pirates thought it was maybe interesting that he was involved in a double switch in that game last night. He is their best all-around player. Runs well, plus defender, three outfield assists. Has power, hits for average, and he's an all-star. And late on that swing. Clint Hurdle, Clint Hurdle talks about him, Al, as being more than just a good player. He, he just thinks he is a solid, solid professional the way he goes about his business. Yeah, he was third in the MVP pal balloting a year ago, and he's hit very well in this ballpark. Hard hit to right. Beltran has it in his sights and makes the play. It's a fly ball, but it's still an out for Jake Westbrook. An easy first. 
Matt Carpenter will lead it off when we come back. First look at A.J. Burnett here this afternoon. Well, A.J. is pitching much better than his one and two record. Of course, the one win came against the Cardinals. Remember, he had a no hitter for six and two thirds before Beltran broke that game up. Been pitching for 13 plus years and just a six and five record against the St. Louis Cardinals. Very tough competitor. And our Barnes Jewish. Difference maker is the leadoff batter that he'll be facing, Matt Carpenter, our third baseman today. And he's hitting 333 in the leadoff spot. And Mike Matheny choosing to make a switch with John Jay. He's batting lower in the lineup today, and Matt Carpenter has responded in that spot. I don't think anybody has a problem with it because here you got a guy that will work the pitcher. He's not afraid to hit with two strikes. He has a very good eye at the plate. John Jay was slumping, but now hitting down the order, starting to come out of it himself. Also like the fact that Matt Carpenter in that leadoff spot hits very well with two strikes. I think that's a valuable commodity for a leadoff hitter because you want him to work counts. Correct. Good batting eye, rarely will expand his zone. The 1-1 one, one from Burnett is that curveball that misses high. And you mentioned in the pregame, Al Burnett, really a two-pitch pitcher. Two-pitch pitcher, which used to be the norm. You know, maybe, you know, he has a third pitch. He has a changeup that we understand he throws occasionally to keep his dad happy. But it's really fastball and curveball. Line drive, base hit up the middle. Watch out, A.J. Burnett. That ball stung by Matt Carpenter, and the Cardinals have their leadoff runner aboard. And here is a look at the rest of the St. Louis Cardinals lineup here this afternoon. We've already seen Matt Carpenter. He'll be followed by Carlos Beltran. A couple of home runs yesterday. Matt Holliday, Alan Craig, and Yadier Molina in the middle. John Jay, the center fielder. Pete Cosma plays short. And Daniel Descalzo playing second base. He'll bat eighth in the pitcher ninth. Marte McCutcheon Tabata on the outfield. Alvarez Barmas Inge and Garrett Jones on the infield. Russell Martin. Got a nice job behind the plate. We'll catch A.J. Burnett. Well, so much for a no-hitter here this afternoon. Got that out of the way. Let's run the shutout. That was a bullet off the bat of Matt Carpenter. They teach the Cardinal hitters to hit the ball up the middle. And this is a pretty good idea, up the middle. And they teach pitchers to duck. And Glad he did. He did that, too. Swing and a foul at the plate. Beltron has such a smooth swing. We mentioned the homer here yesterday from both the left side and the right side for the 10th time in his career. And when he's hot, he really can carry a ball club. Well, remember Thursday, the off day, Beltron was sick with flu-like symptoms. And he told Mike Matheny right before the game yesterday, I'm going to have a good game because I don't feel that well. 
and he's noticed in the past when he hasn't felt well how relaxed he plays and gets good results. And that's not uncommon. Sometimes you don't think as much. You just don't try to overdo things, and you just let your natural ability take over. Deep in the box. Average lead for Carpenter. Burnett checks on him anyway. I really also appreciated the story that Jim Hayes got from Carlos Beltran about those home runs yesterday. Well, how about the fact that he, he said, before we talk about me, let me talk to the kids. How about that? And had a very passionate message for them to be warriors, fight through their illness. A lot of people support them. The one-two just misses, and those kids kids that he had visited that day at Cardinal Glennon and maybe a different side to the players that we got a little glimpse of sure that's not unusual but we don't always get a chance to tell you about it the 2-2 two -two. grounded foul Nobody out, bottom of the first. Cardinals struck early in game one of this series. Beltran checks his swing, and they have the big shift on for Carlos Beltran. And that may make a double play a difficult thing to produce. Yeah, can you ask the shortstop who's playing almost right behind second base, can you tell him to move so I can, you know, I, he's blocking my view of the pitcher. Here goes the runner, ground ball to the right side, and a base hit to right. Carpenter rounds second and heads to third easily, and the Cardinals with runners at the corner to start this one off. Deltron with three on the right side finds a hole. 11 for 34 against him, but how about last season, early May? Carlos had two home runs against A.J. Burnett and look at those numbers. Two and two-thirds, 12 hits, 12 runs, 12 earned runs. And A.J. Burnett this year is up there not leading in strikeouts with his 42. About 72 pitches in that game too and he went less than three innings. That's a lot of pitches and the modern era record for most earned runs given up by a starting pitcher with less than three innings. It's not a list you want to be on, no. is it? But we saw how good he can be in Pittsburgh. Matt Holliday has been very hot, seven for his last 11. RBI opportunity for him, and he's been good in the clutch. Hitting 579 with runners in scoring position in the early going. Well, the Cardinals are just crazy numbers of how well they're hitting with runners in scoring position. Talking a little bit about the two pitch pitchers. That used to be the norm. You know, like a Bob Gibson was two pitch, fastball slider. A lot of guys were that. Very rarely did you see a guy that had a good curveball and a good slider. They kind of found a slot in between and developed a slur. The latest holiday. It reminds me of a story that. Saw Bob Gibson one time. He was very upset. He was the pitching coach. Knew he was bad. I said, Bob, what's wrong? No, nothing. What's wrong, Bob? No, nothing. Said, Come on, tell me what's wrong. He goes, well, you know me. I said something I probably shouldn't have. I kind of laughed. And he goes, we have one of our pitchers. I already got four or five pitches, and he wanted to add another one. And I told him, you ever thought about getting rid of about three or four of those mediocre ones and try to concentrate on one good one? Truth hurts. Swing and a miss. That one passed Holiday up in the zone. But everybody today has to have four, or five, or six pitches, and you don't need them. If you have a couple good ones, you can get by. 93 upstairs throws it by Holiday. Burnett gets most of his strikeouts with the breaking ball, which he calls a curveball, but many that follow the team say it acts more like a slider. It's really kind of in between, but 60% of the strikeouts on that pitch. Will he throw it here? One and two. To sneak the fastball past him. Well, Ricky, 
we know that in order to strike out somebody, you have to have two strikes. So probably a lot of times he uses that fastball to get to two strikes and then the breaking ball to put you away. And I'm sure if you're throwing a lot of those breaking balls, he wants a way to a right-handed batter. So he's pitched inside. Didn't want the changeup, throws his curveball. There's curveball hit on the ground is short. And the double play is turned, but the Cardinals pick up a run. No RBI for Holiday. As the curveball from Burnett produces a couple of outs, left fielding Clint Barmas got it started. Real key, get on the game, get on the scoreboard. There is more rain in the area, but I don't think it's going to have be a factor at all. Once this game started, I think it's going to be such light rain, misty conditions that they'll play through it. Clint Hurdle still a bit agitated by some of the things that transpired here yesterday, but he was really concerned about losing his starting pitcher in this game. Rightfully so. Good matchup for him. And a little tapper to the left side. Tough play for Alvarez, but he gets Alan Craig. So Burnett does give up a run here in the first. Could have been worse. We're through one. Good start for St. Louis. pitchers here this afternoon and they rely on good defense behind them. I remember it's kind of a wet turf so you got to be very careful you have your footing there you see he makes the exchange from glove to hand got a firm grip on it four seam grip and throws a straight one right over to first base to get Alan Craig. Our plaza tire replay and a good sinker on the outside corner strike one to Garrett Jones. Jake Westbrook, not a guy that's going to get a lot of strikeouts. And there are times where he actually has issues with his control, and he really beats himself up about that and doesn't like it. He believes he shouldn't be walking anybody, but there are times where he'll get four or five walks in a game. Well, that's what I'm saying this year, that you can really point to his walks. He's walked 14 and 22-plus innings. His walks come because his move, ball moves so much. And you mentioned Al, he's looking for career win number 100 today. 13 and 11 a year ago for the Cardinals. And I would say very consistently. Breaking ball in the dirt, strike three. Molina's going to have to throw on to first. So there's his first strikeout of the day. The Blues are in the playoffs. We're all excited about that. Fox Sports Midwest, Bud Light, and the Blues present outdoor playoff rallies before every home game. Enjoy bands and a great pregame party. Plus, our Fox Sports Midwest announcers will lead the pep rally from the stage. Go Blues. 
important game tonight. Final game of the regular season. Playoff implications. Oh, nice. Everybody excited about the Blues. Brandon Inge, check swing. Couldn't hold up. Westbrook ahead of him, 0-2. Inge recalled from AAA Indianapolis on Tuesday. He was on a rehab assignment there. Pirates have had a number of injuries they're dealing with. We'll get you up to speed on those as the game progresses. The 0-2 to Inge. Good location. Had like three starters that are on injury rehab right now. Inge playing second base today due to an injury to Neil Walker. The one-two. Change up low. Walker was stepped on on a double play where he slid into second base. Pete Cosma inadvertently stepped on his hand, and according to the Pirates personnel, it was bleeding quite profusely and had to have six stitches after the game. And he is maybe out for a week to ten days. There's a strike three called on the outside corner. Good pitch by Westbrook. That ball came back over that outside corner, and he caught him looking. I would say he's got that tremendous movement, and look at there. You can see the drop in it. Kind of looked like it was going to be outside to a right-handed batter. Not only did it drop, but it moved back towards the outside corner for the called strike. Talking to Bob Walk about Jake Westbrook, and Bob does the color work for the Pirates. He said, every time we see Jake Westbrook, we expect him to be the real Jake, Jake Westbrook because we know how good he is, but we just haven't seen that guy. Remember, they when Jake was with Cleveland, there was Walkie on your left. When he was with Cleveland, they saw the Pirates a lot in interleague play, so he really didn't. It wasn't until last season did he win the first time beat the Pirates it was here and he's now one in seven lifetime against Pittsburgh with an ERA of 5.28 behind Alvarez and this guy's been the biggest trouble for him and I wouldn't blame it if he was a little more careful with him three and oh Alvarez has hit very well here at Bush Stadium not just Westbrook but his numbers overall in the season not very good a lot of strikeouts from Alvarez Alvarez is 11 for 19, two doubles, two home runs, eight RBIs just against Westbrook. No wonder he was swinging 3 0. Can't blame him. The 3 1. May have chased one out of the zone there. Westbrook back in this count. Alvarez has struck out 26 times on the season. He's only batting 170 against right-handed pitchers. He has multi-hit games in three of his last four games. Westbrook has his sign. 3-2. Hit hard, but off the glove of Descalzo, who actually had a shot at catching that ball. Dove to his right and couldn't come up with it. Not an easy play, obviously, but this guy was probably like another shot at that one. Yeah, I think so. I, it was hit very hard, but I think Daniel would be the first one to tell you that he expects to catch that type of line drive. Probably sinking on him, and been a while since he's been out there, but from what we've seen from Daniel Descalzo defensively, he'll make that play nine times out of ten. And that's just how good he is, because that ball was hit very hard that we actually think he's going to catch everything. Sure. And you're surprised when he doesn't. Not an easy play at all, but a base hit clearly for Pedro Alvarez. He's aboard for Russell Martin. Takes a sinker inside for a ball. Martin becoming the Iron Man. He's been hitting better of late. He started 20 of their first 24 games behind the plate. Ground ball left side, backing up is Carpenter, who make the long throw across, and tagging is Alan Craig, and he got it. Alert play all the way around. Nice play, especially by Alan Craig. And Russell Martin is retired, and so are the Pirates here in the second. We're through an inning and a half, one nothing, St. Louis.
consummate catcher, gold glover, always doing things right, Al. Well, you watch by there, he blocks the ball in the dirt. That was on strike three to Jones. But here, this is in the middle of a bat, and you see the good technique. You've got to let that ball go by. We see some catchers just olay it. But if you're going to be the best, you're constantly blocking balls. Remember, Mike Matheny used to do it when pitchers were making the warm-up pitches between innings. And just to get into that habit, practice, practice like you're in a game, and you won't. Uh, and when the game action happens, it'll be right there for you to always have that great technique. Outstanding defensive catcher, and so was his manager. Elena leads it off and takes a strike from A.J. Burnett. Five straight gold gloves. He's the only person in the National League that's ever won the Platinum Glove. Give him that award twice, and yeah, he's won both of them. Painting that outside corner. Now he doesn't think it's a strike, but he wants it the other way. Yeah, he'll, he'll want it for his pitcher. And that's basically what you tell the umpire. Okay, I'll accept that if you give it to my guy, too. Curveball's fouled off, and that one looked like it caught Russell Martin on his throwing hand. And that's the peril of being a catcher. Yeah, sometimes you'll reach out there, try and grab it, and a late swing will put you in a bad situation. Break your ball and watch the bare hand. See it? Not behind his back. It is now because it's stinging. But... Yeah. Kind of started to reach for that ball, and the foul tip got him on the bare hand. How can that not affect your throwing as a catcher to get <laughs> hit that hard with a baseball? Well, what, what did they do? They put ethyl chloride. They put the freezing agent on. All you got to do is stick it out in the air today. <laughs> right. Game time temperatures in the mid 50s. Now just think how this would feel. You'll see that bare hand unprotected, and then the foul Ow. ball hits right on the thumb. That has got to hurt. Of course, you can't feel it right now. The one-two to Molina. Got a little bit too much of the plate. He fouls this one off. Howdy with two home runs. Last year, what, he had a career high 22. He almost seemed like he's in a pull mode. Pulled that one into the gap in left center field, and it's down and to the wall. Molina digging for two, and he'll be there standing up. Leadoff double for Molina here in the second. Looked like he was opened up a little bit, like he wanted the ball inside. That was supposed to be a pitch away. Caught too much of the inner part of the plate, and he made A.J. Burnett pay for it. Look at the catchers outside. Look where the ball is. Down and in, and he just drops a bat head and rifles that ball out to the left center field gap. Real nice technique. His mechanics of swinging that bat was perfect. Ball has an interesting sound to it when a player hits it well. The crack of the bat. Molina got that one square. And so does John Jay. Lines this one to right. Back goes Tabata. And he's got a very good arm in right, but not good enough to get Molina, who advances from second to third. So John Jay does his job. John Jay jumped on that first delivery, and good base running there by Molina. Not the fastest, but a very intelligent base runner tagging up and getting himself over to third with just one out. And a really good at bat for John Jay, who seems to be finding his rhythm right. a bit. But that is that is something why you like Carpenter better on the leadoff spot because John Jay many times will swing at that first pitch. Five game hitting streak for Pete Cosma. Where he's hit 375 infield in, especially at the corners against the Cardinal shortstop. With Molina the runner at third. by Burnett, big strikeout pitcher right now with he's looking for the pop-up in the infield when he gets to two strikes. If he gets there, he'll try and put him away via the strikeout. 
42 strikeouts on the season for Burnett. He leads the National League, and that pitch is in at the knees. In fact, Burnett, with eight more strikeouts, will have 50 for the month of April, and only 22 pitchers all time have done that. I find that hard to believe. It really is. But he's having a big, big month with the strikeouts, and he needs one here against Cosmo. Drive down the right field line, twisting foul. And he thought to a squeeze, Al, in this particular situation. Cosma handles it that well? I, I wouldn't think there because I don't want to see Yachty running into a possible collision. It is so hard to defend against a bunt. If you get the ball the bunt down, it doesn't even have to be that good a bunt. Just getting it down puts a lot of pressure on that pitcher are the defense to try and execute. Setting up inside, pitches outside, and almost gets away from Martin. Set up inside, and boy, look, it cross fires all the way, and lucky that one didn't get called to the backstop. The 2-2. Check swing. They're going to ask for an appeal. No, says Mark Wegner. Mike Winters is the umpire behind the plate today. He's the crew chief. Tim Tidman's had a busy day yesterday. He's the umpire at third, and Laz Diaz at second. I always love it when umpires uh, can read the mind of a pitcher. That was deliberate. Payoff pitch is on its way. Swing and a miss. Burnett picks up his 43rd strikeout of the season, and that's a big one for him. The infield can move back now for Daniel Descalzo. And they're going to intentionally pass Descalzo. Just comes in there, powers the fastball by him. Good location on that one. They're intentionally pass Descalzo here. I can see. And here, Dan McLaughlin right now. Finally, we've got a manager that knows how to manage. <laughs> you think Dan may even be influencing this move? Oh. Sitting behind Clint Hurdle? Danny wants to walk everybody. Well, we'll ask him. Dan returns tomorrow. There's a look at Clint in his third year with the Pirates. Following eight years with the Colorado Rockies. And he's hoping that this is the year, Al, that this is the year that the Pirates have a winning record. 20 straight losing seasons. Fans, you've known for years that StubHub is a great place to find the seats you want to see the Cardinals live. Now they've added StubHub Fan Rewards. So you can earn a little extra with your tickets, like seat upgrades. So head to StubHub and get your Cardinal tickets today. Jake Westbrook a chance to help himself. I'm going to say sometimes the strategy, you know, dictates whether you want. But as a pitcher, I don't think you ever say you're going to concede that I have to walk this eighth place hit. Agree. You always want to compete against it. Westbrook waves at a fastball. And you always think that you can get out any pitcher as a batter. Jake, a career 121 hitter. This is where pitchers get nasty on you, too. There's just, there's no, no letting up, no, okay, pitcher on pitcher, I'll be nice to you. They, they're they going for the jugular here. Well, I, I love to watch a matchup, say, like Gibson and Tom Seaver. You could not appreciate how good they were until they got him to a jam. Good swing there, bouncing straight back. They were always pitching to contact. You know, even big strikeout pitchers like, you know, like Seaver, Gibson, they were trying to get you out on as few pitches as possible. But then if you had two strikes, then they were going for the, the juggler. And 
He strikes out Jake Westbrook, his second strikeout of the inning. Strands a couple of Cardinals. We're through two. Cardinals are up. St. Louis, they picked up a run against A.J. Burnett in the first inning. And Jake Westbrook looking for victory number 100 back out for the top of the third. And we are joined here in the top of the third by George Hutchings, better known as the Shoe Man. That's right. And glad to have you with us. And we're going to chat about the project that you have going on as a partner with the St. Louis Cardinals and their Green Week initiative. Part of what they're trying to do is uh, be... Uh, very responsible with the environment, and that's really your heart too, isn't it, George? A absolutely. We collect uh, thousands of shoes each year, and uh, I turn new shoes into drinking water. My motto is, I don't want your money, I want your soul. Your shoe soul, that is. And, I like it. Yeah, and the I Cardinals like have been bringing uh, shoes to the stadium, and uh, Cardinal Nation last year, after the broadcast like this, they visited our 200 locations off of shoemanwater.org, and we took in over 20,000 pounds of shoes and kept them out of landfills. Wow, that's outstanding. And we, again, appreciate you being with us. And obviously, uh, turning it into water makes it a very meaningful uh, production at the end of the day for folks across the world. When, when we turn these shoes into water, we, we export them to, to South America. People buy them for pennies on the dollar. Then we turn around and buy drilling equipment and water purification. And when a person gets that first drink of clean water, whoops, there's a, a foul ball. And you can, and the shoe man can even do play-by-play. -play. I like yeah, it. Yeah, you betcha. Now, should I call you George or shoe man? Uh, you can call me George. Okay, all right. And Jake, make sure. we collect shoes like Jake Westbrook throws for ground balls. He is a ground ball machine this year. You are. You know what? We may not let Al Roboski back here, George. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, when people get their first drink of good, clean water, it's as sweet as a cardinal victory. Well, we're hoping for one of those here this afternoon. Jake Westbrook working in the top of the third to Barmas, the pitcher Burnett, and then the top of the order. And Jake has allowed just one hit through two. And we are visiting with George Hutchins, better known as the shoe man. Swing and a miss, and Barmas is retired. And we've been talking about your project of turning shoes into water. Now, just exactly how does that work? How do you do that? Well, I collect thousands of shoes each year. Then we export them to South America where people don't have shoes. They cannot afford to buy new shoes. They buy these for pennies on the dollar. Off the export, we take the money and turn around and buy drilling equipment and water purification systems for Kenya and for Haiti. And you have to have a lot of partners to make that work. We you have got, to, in terms of your distribution, that can't be a simple thing to do. No, it's not a simple thing to do. And the Cardinals have been great, and there's a strike. Jake is sharp tonight. A.J. Burnett. Hitting just over 100 for his career, facing Westbrook. One strike on him. Jake looks sharp here this afternoon. 
And there's another pitch on the outside corner. Good sinker from Westbrook. And again, you mentioned over 3 million shoes since 2008. And, and you're serving over 200,000 people with clean, with, drinking, with clean water. drinking water. Outstanding. The Cardinals have been a great partner with that. And uh, we're hoping that people in the community, like schools, churches, uh, civic organizations, scouts, will sponsor us with shoe drives. You know, that's where we get most of our shoes from. And we're very thankful for, for the Cardinals for having us here on uh, during Green Week. Well, we've appreciated the visit. Again, George Hutchins, part of the Cardinal Partnership with Green Week. Schumann Water Projects, a local not-for-profit. And, George, we appreciate you being with us. Ricky Horton, thank you for having me. You bet. Anytime. Two quick strikeouts here in the third inning for Jake Westbrook, now facing Starling Marte, who bounced out in the first. Westbrook working quickly. He just misses that outside corner, 2-0. I heard you, Ricky. You heard me. Oh, I didn't know you were listening, Al. Hard hit, ground ball, pass to diving. Pete Cosma, two out hit for Marte. You mean you heard me when I said that we were going to let the shoe man replace you? Yeah, then you got rid of him quickly. Well, we missed you, Al. I was halfway home. Hard hit ball by Marte, who's had a very, very good season. That's his 30th hit. Baza tire service replay. Diving Pete Cosma. 30 hits puts him up among the league leaders. I believe Marte is second now with yes. that hit. Seven game hitting streak. He's hit in 17 of the last 19 games, over 360. And he runs well. Will he test Yadier Molani? He's got a big lead. Westbrook sees it and checks on him there. Marte has six stolen bases in the early going. The Cardinals have a team, as the team have six. Jake plays, pays pretty good attention to those base runners. Gives Yadier a chance. And if you do that, Yadier's going to gun down most of them. Tavita, open stance. Another check on Marte. Might have, might have been going on that one because he was late getting back. You often sense that, don't you, from sure. the mound? And from the bench, where that call probably came from. Sometimes a base runner will get a big old lead, but it's really one way. He's going back to the bag, just trying to tease you to throw over. And other times a short lead is when he's going. Not going, and a strike right down the middle to Jose Tabata, who has hit very well against the Cardinals. Tabata not off to a good start either at 162, but he's hit the Redbirds well. Now sometimes that, like that last pitch, you wonder why the batter just takes it. You know. He, Paying a lot of for? attention. All right. Fastball right down the middle. Maybe giving Marte a chance to run. Do that, but when you see a pitch like that from a guy that's a ground ball pitcher, you better jump on it because that was going to produce maybe a line drive or should got underneath it and hit a fly ball. Wonder how many fastballs right down the middle Tommy Hur took in the mid 80s for Vince Coleman and Willie McGee. You got a better one, size more. From Lou Brock, but Ted was had that ability to take a couple pitches for Lou, wasn't afraid to hit with two strikes. Then he had that ability after Lou stole second to, you know, shoot the ball to the right side to either drive him in or get him over to third. Teddy really the perfect number two. Oh, yeah, he, yeah he, he was great. Gave himself up an awful lot. Almost throws that one away. Picked by Alan Craig. Westbrook has those quick feet that allow him to have a pretty quick move to first base. Outfield is deep for Tabata. More of a gap power guy than a home run hitter. Westbrook four strikeouts on the afternoon has not walked a batter.
Maybe Marte will take off here and test that gold glover Yadier Molina. He has a big lead and fakes a stolen base and a base hit to left field past Matt Carpenter and a little two out progress for the Pirates here in the top of the third. Our Hyundai replay shows a diving Matt Carpenter. And we've had a lot of Cardinal players diving on the infield. The ball's just out of the reach. Right. And I think Tabata was, or Marte was going to steal. But as he started to take off, he lost his footing. And then the only thing to do is stop. But then when Tabata got the base hit, put him in first and second, four. Their best player. 0 for 4 in the series, but he's still not the guy you want at the plate with runners on base from the Cardinals' point of view. A little bit of funk. He had a career high 0 for 17 snapped on Thursday. Fly ball to right. Beltron sees it and has it. Westbrook strands two in the third. Cardinals lead by one. Here on this Saturday afternoon game against the Pirates, our Jim Hayes joins us now with some more on our injured Cardinal closer of the day. That's Jason Mott. Jim, what do you got? Well, Rick, Jason Mott did some light throwing today, some light tossing for the first time since going on the DL with that elbow strain. 35 light tosses, 30 or 40 feet. He said the elbow felt great. He said the real test will come tomorrow to see how that elbow feels. He also said. That if he continues to make progress, that May 1st deadline for a decision on whether or not he needs surgery could be pushed back either way. Some positive developments for Jason Mott. That's great. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate that update on Jason, who's got the perfect attitude. He's coming to work trying to re rehabbing is not fun, Al. And Jason Mott seems to just have a perfect demeanor about this whole process. And, and that's actually very good news. It's good news if you can avoid surgery. Right. Because if you do have surgery, he's lost for the rest of this year. And the longer you wait, the more he'll time he'll miss next year. And let's hope he can avoid it. One and one to Matt Carpenter. Curveball misses. Carpenter singled and later scored in the Cardinals first. Carpenter leads the National League and runs scored. There's a good knack on the base pass. We talked that he can go deep in the count with a pitcher, not afraid to hit with two strikes. Got his base hit with two strikes. Also, that aspect of leading the league and run scored. 
Hard hit to the right side. Inge to his left. Nice play, and he throws out Carpenter. One out in the third, and it's time for our Twitter poll here this afternoon. Which starter, other than Adam Wainwright, we'll just throw him on the side here for a moment, which starter has the best chance to win 18 games? Is it Westbrook, Garcia, Lynn, or Miller? FSM Westbrook. You can figure it out. FSM Garcia. That's brought to you by AT&T. It's a real good question. Sure is. Lance Lynn, his rookie year, won 18 games last year. He's off to a 4-0 start. Shelby Miller has not disappointed anybody with his start, 3-1. Jaime Garcia, we all know he has phenomenal stuff, and hopefully he can stay healthy and show it. And I've always wondered why Westbrook doesn't have more victories. Sinker ball pitcher, sounds like it's perfect. Ground ball outs, translates into, you know, a, a victory in my book. Shift is on for Beltron. Alvarez has gone to play second base. Shortstop saves put, and that's Clint Barmas and Beltron trying to shoot that ball the other way. It makes kind of sense, doesn't it, to leave the shortstop where he's accustomed to playing? Why put two guys out yeah, of position? What, yeah. Instead of putting two guys out of position, just move the third baseman and keep the shortstop relatively close to his normal spot. So if Alvarez catches this ball, I guess we score at 5 3. 5 3. Just playing second base with an Astro. 0 2 to Beltron. Line drive to right, sinking, and the play is made by the right fielder. Tabata sliding grab. Very nice play. That was not an easy one. That ball hit right on the nose by Carlos Beltron, and Tabata took it off the turf. And remember with the wet grass, if that ball gets down, it'll scoot on by him, go all the way to the wall. Comes in, and it's a sinking line drive, hit extremely well and truly in his glove and no trap. And another good at bat for Carlos Beltron. Oh, yeah. People get confused at times when we say that. What do you mean? A minute out. <laughs> or, or times when a guy even strikes out, but it's an 11-12 pitch at bat. And we say a great at bat. Was that an out-of-zone play by the right fielder, Tabata? Since you are a sabermetric genius how, how now. How did I do today? And it was saber I thought it was outstanding. Sabermetric Saturday, and you know, I had all those RC-24s and the the zoos and the is it the flip or the dip? You were trying fielding Not really ind fielding independent pitching. That's FIP. And I don't know about the RE thing. I don't really I wasn't tracking that one either. But out of zone made a little sense though. It's a, it's plays that a fielder makes out of the normal zone, and it really just an indication of a player's range. Out of zone, and it's the OOZ, and you See, were trying that, to say it's zoo, zoo, backwards. zoo backwards. I got that one. I like the zoo. Al, I thought you were out of your zone when you were talking well, about that. Well, that was true. The one, two is swung on and missed by Holiday. Remember so, out of limits? <laughs> yes, I do. One nothing, St. Louis.
West is brought to you by Schnucks, your neighborhood hometown grocer. And by the Chipotle Chicken Club Combo. Back for a limited time at Jack in the Box. Try one today for fries and a drink for just $4.99 plus tax. Westbrook back to work. Long fly ball to right. It's going to stay in the ballpark, and Carlos Beltran will make the play. So a couple of fly balls to go along with a lot of ground balls here this afternoon for Jake Westbrook, and a good start to the top of the fourth. Only three hits for the Pirates. Cardinals starting pitching has been a strength of this team through the first 22 games of the season. The Cardinals with a 2.22 ERA as a starting staff. And Al, as we talked about already, it's been even better at home and Westbrook continuing that here today. Have, have a little fun with it. Everybody competing in a fun fashion. The starters, you know, last time Jake Westbrook threw a shutout, so then you feel like I'm going to do it this time again. Cardinal pitching has been unbelievable, particularly the starters. Hard hit down the left field line, but hooks foul off the bat of Brandon Inge. You know, we, we just showed a shot of Derek Lilliquist, the pitching coach for the Cardinals. And now anybody in any business or any profession that has to follow somebody who's great understands the pressure of doing that. And if ever the right guy existed to follow Dave Duncan, who's a legendary pitching coach, I think the perfect attitude, the perfect type guy is Derek Lilliquist. And Derek also said that I got the benefit of working a year under Dave Duncan. And same thing could be say about Mike Matheny, you know, replacing Tony La Russa. Not everybody can do that. There's a lot of pressure first of all, that comes you aren't replacing them. You know, you just right. become the next manager. But the constant comparisons sure. you have to deal with. Hey, wait a minute. I thought we were pitched to contact. Hey, well, how come we're doing it this way? I mean, the, just the reality of placing somebody as, as highly respected as Dave Duncan. We hope Dave and his wife Janine are doing well. Delivery from Westbrook. See, missing target, but if you're going to miss and miss in on the hands of the hitter, that's a good spot. Inge has hit in three straight games since his recall. He struck out in the second looking. And hard hit. Center field, that's a base hit in front of John Jay. And hit number four for the Pirates. MLB.com at bat is the number one source for live baseball everywhere you go. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry 10. At bat delivers Cardinals baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit Cardinals.com for details. One thing Jake's been able to do today is get the first man out in the inning. First three innings, he got the first two men out. Facing Alvarez, and it's strike one. My high school baseball coach used to tell us as pitchers, if you get the first out, it's like half an inning. Now, we weren't all math majors, and we knew that it wasn't half an inning, but it seems like that. If you it get really that does. first out, you are definitely downhill from there because there's so many things the other team can't do offensively. Right, you're well on your way to the successful inning. Change up and Alvarez could not stay back on it. 0 oh and 2. Well, he had good arm action on that ball. It looked like he kind of maybe jumped a little more at the hitter, but the deception really fooled Alvarez. Underrated pitch for Jake Westbrook, in my opinion. That change up. I think a lot of people feel that if you got a very good sinker, a changeup is a really good complementary pitch to it. One more look at that check swing on Pedro Alvarez. Technique is always so good. It's not so much to catch the ball, but to do just what Yachty did, keep it right in front of you. 
where there's no advancement by the runner. Love is almost used to block the hole between your legs, and then you kind of roll your shoulders forward and try to engulf the ball until it hits hits the ground, hits the chest protector, and drops right in front of you. And the pitcher is imparting spin on the ball, so you're going to have to be concerned about what way the ball is going to spin spin and dart after it hits. Molina's outstanding at doing that. The 0-2, a call third strike on the outside corner. He catches Pedro Alvarez looking. Fifth strikeout of the afternoon, and is it a strike? Well, I think this is part of the magic of Yadier Molina. He can sell a lot of these pitches. He sets up outside at, at times, but when they hit the target and you're set up out there, I think it almost lulls the umpire to a sleep and just gives you the expanded zone. Now Russell Martin, pirate catcher, bouncer to the left side. You better hurry. Martin runs well for a catcher, but Cosma throws him out. Westbrook pitches around a base hit by Inge. He's through four, scoreless. Thirteen better than ever. The next Family Sunday, April 28th, the Cardinals host the Pirates. All fans purchasing individual tickets in select seats will receive a Hunter hot dog and a Coca-Cola. Get your Hunter Family Sunday tickets at cardinals.com slash values. one nothing. Cardinals, big weekend, a lot of promotions this weekend. It's Alan Craig bat day today. We got the replica ring last night and the Carlos Beltran bobblehead Tomorrow. Here tomorrow. Wonder if Alan Craig is using one of those bats. Or you think he's using his own? No, that, that bat is too small for Alan. Fits Jim, though. <laughs> I'm going to tell him you said that. I think he's crying right now. He heard it. Here's a look at the Alan Craig replica bat. He was very excited about being a part of that. You know, he's such a humble guy. He doesn't yeah. really like to talk about himself. And Jim tried to get out of him. Did he feel any more pressure? And his answer was no. Yeah. He was honored. But, right. And would like to do well, but he's not going to make the mistake of trying to do too much. Greg Molina and Jay. In the Cardinal fourth, and he takes a strike on the outside corner. 0 and 2. Did you say Craig probably uses a 34 inch bat? Now I'm just guessing 34, maybe 32, 33. Uh, 33 Wait. is pretty heavy for these guys today. The 0 2 is a swing and a foul tip, but held on to by 
the catcher Barmas. So another strikeout for A.J. Burnett. And this time he gets Alan Gray. There's that good breaking ball. So four strikeouts now for the National League leader. Yadier Molina, very difficult to strike out. Always in the top ten in the National League. Being hardest to strike out. And he takes a fastball high and away, ball one. Also notice that cracking that list, a name we don't always see on that list, Matt Holliday, Cardinal left fielder, is not striking out very much this season and swinging the bat very well of late. Hard hit to center, but right at the center fielder McCutcheon. Two outs in the fourth. Our carsoup.com email the booth. Today comes from Hannah, Hannah from Brentwood, Missouri. And here's her question now. If you guys were umpires last night, how would you have handled the hit batters? Good question. Well, I, I wouldn't have done what Tim Timmons did, and I would not have ejected Sanchez on the fourth batter. It looked suspicious. I think you could warn both sides, but I would not ejected him and umpires do have the right to if they ever think a pitcher is intentionally trying to hit someone they can throw him out without any warnings as we saw last night I think there's any doubt that Sanchez was trying to throw inside I think yeah, we can I, all agree with that and, and part of my thinking is here here's a guy that hasn't won in 18 starts his ERA is you know over 12 He's barely hanging on in the big leagues. Why would he draw extra attention to himself? One thing that's going to do is get him released. And as we see, a <laughs> batter getting hit. That with a curveball from A.J. Burnett with two outs. John Jay is hit. And so he's a runner. Of course, he's the other side of that, as we look at that pitch one more time, Al, is if you do a warning, then the team that is offended then gets frustrated because they don't have a chance to, let's say, get even. Nice quotes. It was a turnaround, Lance Lynn, get two batters. And it was the same batter, Marte. But as we indicated, you know, he kind of dives across the plate. He got hit in the hand both times. And couldn't Tim really was correct. Couldn't you know? find anybody in either dugout today that believed that any pitch after that first inning was on purpose. Right. At least that's the way it was perceived. Up fly going towards the stands, and it's in the first row, just out of the reach of Garrett Jones. Good effort by him. Ricky, I guess I'll have to relay on my personal experience because one time, one time with Benny, I was fine for throwing at a batter. And one time it resulted in a fight, and I had no problem with being the $50 fine for pitching inside, but I didn't think it I was needed to be fined uh, you know three hundred dollars more for the batter charge in the mound and what in the process you have to pay the fine to get the hearing the hearing is the judge is the man that assessed the penalty on you to begin with the league president back then this, and this all they, sounds very un-American so well, far. Alan. I mean, Go they ahead. have the court stenographer there. You know, the Players Association is there representing your side. The, the umpire, they called him in. What happened? And the umpire said, well, I, I positively 100% knew that you were trying to hit that person. Hmm. I said, there's no way that ball could have slipped. No, absolutely not. I said, well, what, why didn't I walk the guy before that? So when the league president Chuck Feeney told me that I should have uh, I should have ran behind second base and let the peacekeepers take care of it <laughs> is when I said okay boys you already got my money let's just call this quits it's a farce I said if I would have done that not only would I be laughed out of the league but my own teammates wouldn't respect me so let's just call it quits here goes the runner throw to second base and it's cut off by the pitcher Burnett <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> and now the umpire wants to see the ball. Yes, AJ liked that ball so much he wanted to throw it again in the dirt. 
Quick release, quick throw, hit the cutoff man. Okay. That's funny. I wonder if that goes as a throw attempt for the catcher. It down does. to second base. Really, John Jay stole that base on Burnett. He got a very good jump, and he gets himself into scoring position. Yeah, that's the first deal of the year for John Jay. And hurts the throwing percentage of Martin at that was 36. Very strong outfield arms for the Pirates. Because of the wet grass and maybe a slick baseball if it hits the hits the ground. Should score from second base on any ball hit to the outfield. Payoff pitch is low to Cosma. He struck out in the second and he walks here into fourth and that brings in Daniel Descalzo who was intentionally walked his own only plate appearance. Descalzo to me Al is the kind of player Aaron Miles Skip Schumacher just a incredibly important glue team player to have on your roster winning players know how to play the game right not going to be you know counted on as the stars but they play it fundamentally sound do all the right things and they'll contribute to a lot of victories Daniel trying to get on track with his swing. Takes a curveball just a bit outside. Descalzo at 163. He's hit into some bad luck, but certainly not the stroke that he has wanted. Not really getting a lot of playing time of late. Yeah, had a very good spring. Offensively hit the ball extremely well. But as you said, playing time has been cut down. Fastball catches the inside corner, and Descalzo doesn't like that. And when you're coming off the bench most of the time and you're trying to make up for lost appearances, you know, then you get a, those bad calls go against you, or those calls go against you, and you always feel like you're hitting 0 and 2. The 1 2, curveball low. One nothing St. Louis game two of a three game series. Cool overcast afternoon in St. Louis. Cardinals back home after a long road trip Al and off to a good start with a 9 1 victory yesterday. Descalzo looking to add to the Cardinals lead here in the fourth. A tough schedule first couple months with so many road games. Think here on a 3 2 pitch, two outs, a pitcher on deck, gonna see a breaking ball. It's his strikeout pitch, but he can't certainly afford to just groove one with the pitcher next and everybody running. And they're off, and the pitch is a curveball. Al called it, and it results in a walk to load the bases for Jake Westbrook, so he doesn't give in. And he's going to rely on his ability to get out Jake Westbrook, who struck out in the second inning. Four strikeouts for Burnett, and that is his third walk, and he's also hit a batter. And that batter is right there, John Jay at third. Cosmo, the runner, at second, and Descalzo talking it over with Chris Maloney. And Jake has one grand slam. He hit that last year, I believe, against Milwaukee. I'm going to guess that's not 30 for 90. No. In his career. I think it's one for three. I remember the joy on his face when he hit that home run. We had a nice tight, tight shot of his face, and he was the most surprised man yes. in America. Yes, he was. It just this goes to show you sometimes if you open your eyes and you swing, you might hit it. 
Oh, he works at it. There's no question. Pitchers all work at trying to be better hitters. And he takes a strike. It's what folks, you know, you try to explain that, you know, the, the pitchers, there are what? 12 pitchers on a team, 30 teams. This is the best 360 pitchers on the planet. And these are the best hitters on the planet. And to be able to be the best at both of those things. Takes a strike. And we've done some research. And no, he's not 30 for 90. But he's also not one for three, Al. He's two no, for six. Two for six. Here he has so much confidence in his ability. He spotted two strikes to Burnett. Just to trick him now for this pitch. I'll go with that. Keep your feet in there. <laughs> Got that happy feet going. Sure does. Well, now just try to. Flare one to right. You That's know, what you hope for. Throw a breaking ball and throw it away. Okay. One and two the count. Base is loaded. That moment for Jake Westbrook. There's the surprise look. 345 feet down the line. Edward Jackson happy. And now he's getting this count back neutral 2-2. Three and two. Wouldn't this be something? At the very least, getting that pitch count up. Adam 0 2. I can't throw a strike. Crowd in here. Fans liking this moment. The payoff pitch. Foul back. Good swing by Westbrook. I'm not sure if the fans are cheering for a walk or another grand slam. What do you think? I, I think they're cheering for a walk. I think so too. Oh, Don will accept the grand slam, but we want to see a walk. Noisy place here at Bush Stadium. There's a strike three call. Fans don't like it. Jake Westbrook doesn't either. Burnett strands three on to the fifth. And our charter high speed pitch. Starting pitchers Jake Westbrook and A.J. Burnett. Burnett is hit 94 on the radar, and Jake Westbrook, pretty normal for him, his highest fastball at 91. And there is Jake Westbrook. 
99 and 96 in his career. Four solid innings of work, no walks, five strikeouts for Jake. About four singles. And as I said, all four innings, he got the first man out. First three innings, he got the first two out. I think the jury is still out in terms of overall fan opinion, but I really like these alternate jerseys personally. I, I like kind of the tie to history a bit. I like the cream color of them and make things just kind of stand out well. I think it's a uniform these guys are proud to wear. Yeah, I think they like it. I know the, a lot of the fans do, and I think the usual patch is something there to keep all permanent and on our stand, the greatest card. Farmers quickly in the hole, 0 and 2, and Westbrook again working quickly and working ahead. The infielders love that about him. Yeah, they're on their toes. They know he gets so many ground balls. Sometimes the outfielders fall asleep, but. With a 58 footer. The one two. Ground ball up the middle and past Cosma. And into center field, leadoff hit for Barmas. And you mentioned that Westbrook has got that leadoff hitter out every inning. And he can't say that now. Ground ball hit fairly hard and scoots on by. Cosmo gets down there. Would have been tough to field that off the shoe tops, right yourself, and spin and throw, but I'd love to have seen it. Grass a little wet, maybe the ball a little quicker than normal. Carpenter expecting the bunt in on the grass and charging Burnett as we speak, and he takes strike one on the outside corner, and Burnett doesn't like that call. So Burnett doesn't like the call. Westbrook doesn't like the call. They're both arguing with the wrong guy. And if you're pitching a ball game, I don't think you want really want to get in an argument with the home plate umpire. Don't you just say, yes, sir? How's your family? Oh, I think you turn around and say, well, I want that one too. Give that pitch to me and no problem. 0-2 oh, on Burnett. There was a little issue with the Cardinals and Burnett, which seemed to kind of go away, a little dust up after the start that he had where he threw that one hitter where he turned to the Cardinals dugout and shushed everybody like told him to be quiet and that happened in the middle of the game he thought the Cardinal bench was getting on him the 0 2 is a call third strike so not a good at bat for Burnett he's called out another strikeout for Westbrook That's six for Westbrook he's beaten Burnett in that department too so to AJ's finish, got five to finish that story on Burnett, at, at one point, the Cardinals were concerned, well, what's he doing yelling at us? He's, he's one hitting us, and now he's kind of rubbing it in. But Burnett had thought a Cardinal was getting on him, and they were really getting on the umpire. So he came on later that night and apologized and actually went over to the Cardinals' clubhouse and apologized for misunderstanding what he thought he'd heard from the Cardinals' dugout. I take the motivation of I want to get the revenge for the first part. The psychology of Al Roboski. Well, you know, I mean, I used, to, again. I used to hear how talented my mother was. She could do things I, I, I never knew. Things that yelled at me. And that made you nastier. That's right. Hence the mad Hungarian. Right. Controlled hate move. 0 oh, and 1 on Marte. Barmas, the runner at first. No stolen bases so far this season. And fouled off to the right side. A little late is Marte. You can tell that the Pirate approach is to let the ball get deep in the zone because they're fouling a lot of balls off to the other side. And how about that play? And that's with a degree of difficulty. His buddies that wasn't really helping him. <laughs> Oh, 
Molina set up inside, and that's where the pitch goes, and just barely getting a piece of it is Marte, who's one for two. Another example of Molina blocking a ball in the dirt. We've seen about four so far this afternoon. And this is another time where it's good. That ball bounces so out in front, and you're kind of at the mercy of the bounce. And which way does it spin? Gotti does a great job of leaning forward, which causes the ball to kind of get smothered into the ground, keeps it from bouncing off to the left or to the right. The one two is grounded foul again. Really like the skill set of Marte. We feel that having him for the entire year is going to make a difference. They're going to get over the 500 mark. Of course, the last two years they had no problem doing that until the last six weeks, two months of the season, and then they just totally collapse. Was staying there. That was the problem. The one-two. Curveball hit hard at Cosma, and he catches it in the air. And they need to tag the runner. How about that? Westbrook threw another. Cardinals will be hosting the ninth annual Purina Pooches in the Ballpark Day. Always a fun day at the ballpark. Come downtown and enjoy a ball game with man's best friend right beside you. Limited number of tickets are on sale now at cardinals.com slash pooches. That's pooches in the ballpark. Brought to you by Purina. So Marte lines into a double play. To end the fifth, the Cardinals batting here in the bottom of the fifth on the top of the order in Carpenter, Beltron, and Holiday. Carpenter singled and scored in the first and bounced out in the third. That's only allowed three hits on the day. First two lead off in the first day, and then a lead off double in the second. But the Cardinals have stranded five in this game. 
very overcast afternoon here in downtown St. Louis. It's almost like a you know, very foggy, misty day. Damp. Feels like the cold goes right through you. Line drive to center. Hit right on the nose by Carpenter. But played by McCutcheon. Now for a limited time, you can get two bacon, egg, and cheese biscuits for just $3 at McDonald's. Some umbrellas out here this afternoon. We've had a little bit of rain. And this reminds me of Cape Cod, Al. I don't know if you've ever played in Cape Cod or visited there, but a lot of times you'd get these kind of foggy days. the premier summer leagues in all of college baseballs in Cape Cod. You can barely pick out the arch. The way they would determine whether to play a game in the Cape is they would tend, send both center fielders out and a coach would hit them fungos and they would have to say whether they could see the ball or not. Could you lie? Uh, evidently. I'm sure there was some of that going It'd be on. a lot easier. They're college than students. Al, come on. They're truthful. <laughs> Easier than leaving the hose on in the infield. And that does happen and has happened. <laughs> Carlos Beltran, two very good at bats, a single, and he lined out to the right fielder, Tabata. And he late on that swing, and the throw goes down to the shortstop. Two outs in the Cardinals' fifth. What's on tap? Brought to you by Budweiser. The Cardinals and the Pirates tomorrow, final game of the three-game series. Our coverage begins at 12.30 on Fox Sports Midwest. Andrew McCutcheon will highlight him. He's been very good here at Bush Stadium, although he is in a bit of a funk. As you said, Al, of late, and he can get out of his funk later. Shelby Miller be on the mound. Anxious to see him. All the Cardinal fans looking forward to watching his progression. I'm looking forward to the result of our Twitter poll, which is which Cardinal, other than Adam Wainwright, has the best chance of winning 18 games. I'm very curious to see that result. Yep. Little four-year-old Cardinal fan, Nathan Pennington, is probably excited to see that. Nathan recovering from surgery in Peoria. I hope he has a speedy recovery and get out and see the Cardinals. Of course, Peoria is, is back in Cardinal country now. Sure is. The Nockins have that own that ball club up there, and every so often they go a little crazy and. It becomes a Cub affiliate, and then they come to their senses, and the Cardinals are back there. They are back on track. Went there on the caravan, deep in the hole, long throw for Barmus, and he gets Matt Holiday. One, two, three inning. Not much hitting. A lot of fog here at Bush Stadium. One nothing, St. Louis.
66 with eight gallons or more now until June 30th and receive up to 50% off on a pair of tickets to a Cardinals home game. For more information, visit cardinals.com slash Phillips 66. We are through five innings here at Bush Stadium. Pirates, no runs on five hits. The Cardinals, one run on three hits and strike one to Jose Tabata. Tabata signed, was it last year or the year before, a big six year contract? Then he kind of found out he lost his job. He's only 24. Yeah. People question his worth, work ethic after he signed that contract, and then Snyder kind of beat him, beat him out for the job in spring training. Because they, they thought Snyder, they got him from Toronto. He had great power potential. Right. But they haven't seen it. A late scratch here today. Yeah. He was in the lineup till the very last minute. Now curve ball. Him. And that's just a flat curveball from Westbrook. Tabata hit 299 for the Pirates in 2010. And a little tapper back to the mound. Westbrook gets rid of it quickly. And another ground ball out for Jake. Jake's had six strikeouts and a few balls hit to the outfield, but his infielders were on their toes, and he is also a very good fielder. You almost have to be yeah. if you're a sinker ball pitcher. If you're a sinker ball pitcher, you better, when you release that ball, you became another infielder. You're a fifth infielder in there, and you should be able to help your own cause quite a bit. Only 78 pitches for Westbrook. Working from the first base side of the rubber. And the first pitch is a swing and a miss to Andrew McCutcheon, who's 0 for 2. with the ability to change a game in a hurry. And I think he'd like to have a shot at that pitch. Hung on the inside yeah. half. He just Jake got away with one there. Catching right in between. In between right now, kind of guessing a little bit. And you're right, he would have wanted that curveball. He had another shot at it because he just kind of sat there. One of those cases where you're looking for one pitch or a particular location and you don't get it, you give up on it quickly, and then you think, wow, I could hit that pitch. Cardinals play him straight up on the infield, deep in the outfield, but they shade him a bit to the right side. The 2 2. Way outside. Yeah, Jake, Mentioned. Jake might have slipped there a little bit. It's one of the few, if if not the first full count Jake has had today. He hasn't walked a batter, and that's good news in itself. Payoff pitch. Broken bat to the right side. McCutcheon hustling all the way. And he is retired. A lot of strikeouts today. Our head and shoulders with package. Jake Westbrook finding that strikeout pitch. See, he's gotten a lot of hitters to just expand their zone. And then there's times where they're caught looking. But he's just gone out here and been masterful as Jake has struck out six. As a walk to man today, and all the hits that he's allowed have been singles. 84th pitch for Westbrook. Garrett Jones 0 for 2. Has hit 341 since being in that cleanup spot for the Pirates. He's one of those guys that's blossomed late. 
minor league player with the Minnesota Twins. I remember when they got him a couple of years ago. He just had a tremendous second half. 20 home runs in the second half. Ground ball to right side under the dive of Descalzo and into right field. A two out hit for Jones. Cardinal fans certainly remember the name Brandon Inge, our Klondike moment of glory, and it's Inge and Adam Wainwright. Here's the final pitch. Strikeout in game five of the 2006 World Series. Look at Adam. Boy, he had the great strikeout. The Beltron, that's the one against Inge. And, and grown men can act like little kids. Can't blame them. No. I'm jealous of every time I see it. I agree. Inge had a base hit his last trip and takes strike one. I started to talk Al about the pitching prospects that the Pirates have down the road. They have a couple of young guys, number one in double A AA and triple A, who they're very excited about as we look at the action in the Cardinal bullpen. That's Kelly and Choate. But the Pirates are also going to get Jose Contreras soon. He's on a rehab assignment and he's ready. 41 year old journeyman right hander. And they're also one or two starts away from having Charlie Morton and Francisco Liriano both back. And that's going to help boost this team a bit. So the Pirates have played well of late and that pitching help may be a big boost for them. Oh yeah it's. They're making improvement. They're just trying to tread water until they get there. Those reinforcements popped up on the infield. Descalzo looking through the fog makes the play. The injury tired. Very good afternoon so far for Jake. One nothing Redbirds are never stop improving. Brought to you by Lowe's is Alan Craig, the Cardinal first baseman. First 10 games of the season, average at 220. In the last 10, he has been very hot and has also picked up the RBI pace. The on base percentage good as well, and he's also contributed defensively today. This throw took him off the bag, and he was able to recover and tag out Russell Martin. Alan Craig has been a good RBI man for St. Louis. He has 18 RBIs on the season. In fact, the oddity for him, Al, 18 RBIs, and he's still looking for home run number one. That's great production. Ground ball to the right side, and a tough play almost handcuffed Jones a bit. But he is retired. 
For a St. Louis sports fan, this is your absolute dream job. You could be the next Fox Sports Midwest girl. Lock on to FoxSportsMidwest.com for details and a chance to be the next Fox Sports Midwest girl. Yadier Molina one for two, doubled in the second. And he's done a nice job with Jake Westbrook. Really an eerie feeling at the ballpark here, Al. Cool temperatures that we've mentioned. Oh, we can't even see the arch now, and the rain is a little bit more. A few umbrellas showing up. Very dark inside the ballpark. Popped up on the right side. Over is Jones, and this time he has room. And the lights are on, but uh, really haven't taken effect. Well, we've been waiting for this moment. Our Twitter poll results. Which Cardinal starter has the best chance to win 18 games? Not named Wainwright. And Lance Lynn, Al, with 44% of the vote, beats Shelby Miller. Garcia Westbrook also with some votes. Uh, Any surprises there? Not really. I think what also speaks well is those are the two youngest guys. And so they're going to have long, productive careers, we all hope. If that boat would have turned out 25, 25, 25, 25, I would not have been surprised. I could have seen that happening. Jake Westbrook, a veteran. I would have been you surprised. Would have. But I understand like you your a, thinking, too. You could too. make a case for Garcia as having the best upside in terms of his stuff. Yeah. And when he's good, he's extraordinarily good. And uh, but since it is a poll of the fans, I think... Most fans will tell you they have more question marks about Garcia than any other starter. And I thought all the Jake Westbrook fans were watching today and would be voting. Based on what he's doing right now, why can't he win 18? John Jay lines it down the right field line, and it's fair and up against the wall. Jay headed to second, and he will have to stop there as Tabata gets it in. A two-out double for John Jay, and he's aboard for the second time here this afternoon. And you can see John Jay swinging the bat a lot better. Four for his last eight now. And he had that rough road trip to finish of it. You know, he was over 21 before he had a pinch hit single. And now Mike Matheny easing him down in the order to take a little pressure off him. Starting to get some results there. I, not that I have to feel like I have to rush him right back to the top spot because I wouldn't. Give it some time, you think? That ball almost gets away from Martin. It really, you can afford to give it some time as long as Matt Carpenter continues to be effective in that leadoff spot. Sure. You don't want to just load up your, all your left-handed hitters. One of the places a lot of people think Carpenter, you know, is if he's not leading off, it's like in that two-hole. Like Joe Kelly continue to throw. Jake Westbrook. Hit yeah, two yeah. batters after Pete Cosma, and I guess Mike Matheny wants him ready just in case he has to pull the trigger here. Okay, he's got a left-hander warming up, Clint Hurdle. That was Tony Watson, I believe. Opportunity for the Cardinals here. 2-0 oh on Pete Cosma. John Jay, the runner at second. The Cardinals leading 1-0. Nice lead by John Jay. And a strike at the knees. The Cardinal fastball must be sneaky fast. He can still rush it up yeah. there, 93, 94. We saw him on the gun at that. Velocity, 101 pitches for him. Ground ball foul. Now the Cardinals starters have 14 wins 
already in the month of April. 14 and 4 as a group. And most the Cardinals starters have had as a group 2000. They had 16. And still some time to catch them. The Cardinals starting pitching has really just been fantastic. Westbrook no exception. Here today. 2 to the count. To Cosma. Oh, when you think about it, Rick, all the wins the Cardinals have this year are by Cardinal starters. So the bullpen has lost half of their eight losses. They're 0 and 4. But it seems like things are starting to iron themselves out, take care of themselves now that Mohik is at the end. And Kelly becomes kind of that uh, seventh inning guy. Moisture appearing to be affecting Pete Cosma at the plate here. He asked for time. Rain starting to fall just a bit heavier here. Kind of a mist more than anything else, and that's what we've been experiencing again with the fog. Are kind of a dreary day here. Or even just a nuisance rain. It's enough to get under your skin, kind of bug you, but it just. The chill goes right through you. Payoff pitch. Up the middle. Base hit Cosmo. Here comes John Jay rounding third. And he will score two to nothing Cardinals. Hey Rick, another two out. Key base hit delivers another run. Cosmo's eighth RBI. Most of the time he's been in the eighth spot in the batting order. Here he's batting seven, but a two out base hit up the middle, and the Cardinals just doubled their lead two to nothing. Could prove to be a very key hit in this game. There's the lead of John Jay. He scores with no problem. And give him credit for his two out double, giving Cosma that opportunity. Two out base hits just drive a manager's batting. There goes Cosma. Throw to second base, not in time. Good jump by Pete Cosma. That's his first stolen base of the year, and he was flying on a wet track. Well, the, the Pirates, the last few years, teams have run at will against them. One of the reasons they acquired Russell Martin was hopefully to stop some of that. But when you give up so many stolen bases as a team an awful lot has to be stealing against the pitchers and that was the case right there good pitch Great to job. throw too I mean that was a pitch yeah, up and away almost looked away like, almost looked like a pitch out but in these conditions you aren't surprised that the ball is high and wide or sails on you a little bit so let's assume they walk Daniel Descalzo again a pitch hit Ty Wigginton in the on-deck circle. And that's part of the cat and mouse game that managers will play. Sometimes you get a reliever up and sometimes you get a pinch hitter ready even if you're not going to use them. Yeah, just Trying to force them to Trying pitch to force the game. somebody to make a different move. Exactly. Curveball misses. That looked like it slipped out of the hand of A.J. Burnett, and he asked for a new baseball. Right. If Kelly were to reach, do you want a tired A.J. Burnett facing Wigginton, or do you go to the left-hander, Watson, knowing that Mike Matheny will pull Pull Wigginton and bring in a right handed pinch hitter. There's a strike. I would say, considering the limited number of innings in the Pirates bullpen today, I think you stay with Burnett as long as you can. I know in Mike Shannon's interview with Clint Hurdle today, Clint intimated that he had plenty of arms. He had four arms down there in the bullpen that were ready to pitch. 
And Tony Watson warming up is one of those that it was not used yesterday. Full count and Clint was very thankful in his pregame comments about the work of Gomez and Hughes out of the bullpen after sure. Sanchez got tossed early. I mean he didn't have to because that happened so early he didn't have to use any of his go to guys with a lead. Or in a close ball game. Another full count pitch this time to Descalzo. And that ball's hit hard in the left center field on the move is Marte who calls off. McCutcheon we can barely see him out there through the fog. He Cosma a big hit. Beltron to your bobblehead collection presented by First National Bank. It's a great day to bring the family early and also stop by Prairie Farms ice cream Sundays for complimentary North Star frozen treats, music, and prizes in the Ford Plaza. For more information and to purchase tickets, visit cardinals.com slash promotions. And Mike Matheny goes to his bullpen and he calls on Joe Kelly, he's our Chevy call to the bullpen, and Joe Kelly getting a lot of action of late after we hadn't seen him very much, Al, and he has responded. Well, he's the Ferrari in the garage. The description that Derek Lilliquist had for this hard throwing right hander. He was kind of pegged as the the long man in the bullpen and rarely used. Last homestand, we didn't see him at all. Pitch one time at Pittsburgh, two innings, did very well in that game. Then we saw him a little bit in, I guess, uh, had to wait till we went to Washington. And then he had a couple appearances there, and now he seems like he has settled in as Mike Matheny's choice in the seventh inning. Rosenthal in the eighth, no week in the ninth. Pedro Alvarez, part of the reason that Westbrook's out of this game? You surprised at all by this move? No. Now I just not surprised and I think they feel that Joe Kelly would only be going one inning anyway. So there's no double switch. Change up misses low Westbrook 91 pitches 60 of them for strikes. And looking to pick up a victory against a team that he has just not pitched well at all against. And Mike Matheny taking him out while the getting's good. Six innings, no runs, no walks, and six strikeouts. And we'll look at the changeup grip, the circle change of Joe Kelly. Thumb in. First finger form that little circle. There you see it. They form a circle on the side of the baseball and then the Ground ball right side up the middle past Descalzo in the center field base hit for Alvarez. That's his second hit of the afternoon. 
the strategy that Mike Matheny and if you think last year after the All-Star break the trade deadline when Mojica was the seventh inning Boggs the eighth and Mott the ninth that really kind of paints you in a corner but those guys were so successful it just night after night after night it, they just all threw sh three shutout innings and closed out a victory but it leaves very little room now Rosenthal beginning to throw hard hit to right Beltron is back this ball is deep and this ball is gone we are tied two to two opposite field home run by Russell Martin and just like that we have a new ball game. Mm. Joe Kelly came in last night's ball game and did pick up the final three outs to end that game. Gave up a couple of hits in there. And here they come back and they. Get the two runs, tie this game. Pitch was this not fastball away. Not, not really up. No. Well, so Martin's good. third home run, two RBIs tie it. Not oh. a bad location, but certainly a bad result for Joe Kelly and the Cardinals, and that spoils Jake Westbrook's opportunity to win career game number 100. Swing and a miss. No closer in college. An outstanding job last year coming up and starting 16 games. Base hit to right. Kelly not fooling the Pirates here this afternoon. Three straight hits in the seventh. And now what will Clint Hurdle do? Pitcher spot AJ Burnett. A little bit more of the plate. Really not a pretty swing. He's just kind of off balance, reaching for it, but lifts it for the line drive. This is James McDonald, the pitcher. They're on the horn round there. So you can see if Rosenthal gets up. Donald's one of their starters. And you can see how Carpenter already playing in, guarding against the bunt. McDonald pitched against the Cardinals on the last road trip, didn't pitch very well at all, but has gotten back on track. Now he's called on in a bunt situation here. They're saving their pitch hitters, and his bench is a little light today without Neil Walker. Who is out with a hand contusion, six stitches yesterday? We really never heard what, why Travis Snyder was taken out of the game. You know, maybe there's something that was illness or something. It, he may not be available. Good point. So Hurdle using a pitcher here to bunt against Joe Kelly, but first to move to first. Ricky, not trying to make any excuses, but Kelly was used so infrequently. And then all of a sudden he's used quite a bit this this week. That sometimes that will take a more of a toll on you because you just haven't built up that stamina. There's a strike on a fastball. McDonald not able to get any wood on that. Cardinals charging with Carpenter and Craig both. Cardinals have been very good Al over the last 10 years at aggressively trying to get the lead runner when possible. See shortstop second baseman playing back corners coming in. And interesting that it's become an, a really an organizational philosophy. I talked to the Brewers broadcasters about that and they say they all preach from day one. Don't worry about the lead runner. Take the out always. That's that. That's how they play. But the Cardinals yeah. charge hard and try to get that lead runner 
whenever possible. Yeah, I think that's the key. Whenever possible, try to do it. You know, you can always have to get at least one. But many times you can get the lead runner. On occasion, you get both of them. I just kind of, I think too, a lot of pitchers forget about taking advantage in, in a bunt situation and you know they just lay it in there and let them butt instead of trying to get that strikeout that find a pitcher that can't uh, get the butt down and ends up striking out bunny Kelly would like a strike out here needs something good to happen to two just misses the outside corner and now he's got a full count Outside, trying to give you an out. You have to make sure you take it. Trouble for Joe Kelly here in the Pirates' seven. Two runs already. Russell Martin, two run shot. Barmas, the runner at first. Full count on McDonald, the pinch hitter, and he strikes out bunting, and he may have done the Cardinals a favor. That pitch may have been. Up out of the zone. So a strikeout bunting. I'm looking at him stab at it. Stab at it. And then the barrel dips down, just popping the ball up. So a short bench maybe hurting Clint Hurdle here in the seventh inning. Starling Marte is one for three. And will Clint do some running here or hit and run? Both possibilities. Fastball misses. Marte likes to swing the bat. He's a very aggressive hitter. Uh, the greatest line comes from Latin American players, and they ask about, you know, why do you, why do you guys not ever want to go up there looking for a walk? And the answer is you don't walk off the island. We have heard that for years, haven't we? Yeah. I mean, you hit yeah, your way. Hit your way off the island. Pitch your way off you know, the island of Hispaniola, where the Dominican is part of that island, Puerto Rico. Curacao now is becoming a big Quite a few players from there. And Mexico and uh, Venezuela are a little more landlocked. A lot of Venezuelans play, playing in the big leagues right now. Very solid players throughout. And folks are dressed for Cardinal baseball today. Not they, not looked bad, at their, is it? they looked at their weather app before they left. Kelly has his sign. And the 2 1. This is inside again, and he's been missing to the arm side quite a bit. And maybe a hit and run count here. Barmas the runner at first. Pirates with two runs in this inning have tied it off of Joe Kelly. 3 1, not going, and ball four. And a walk to Marte sends Barmas to second, and looks like that's going to be it for Joe Kelly. Mike Matheny heads out to our home plate umpire, Mike Winters. And now he has to do the double switch with the pitcher spot to up first. And we'll sort that out for you during a break. 2 2. Top of the seven.
fans for every Blues playoff victory. A lucky fan will win an autographed street pole banner. Enter at the Fox Sports Midwest Facebook page, like the page, and click the Win It All tab for your chance to win. Enter today for your best chance to win. And a look, Al, at the Western Conference standings. The Blues currently in fourth place, and they are playing Chicago tonight, their final game of the regular season. The playoffs in the NHL starting on Tuesday. Not sure whether the Blue, Blues will play Tuesday or Wednesday. Well, when tonight, it'll help their own cause. Home ice. Rosenthal comes in here as part of a double switch. Shane Robinson is playing in center field, and he will lead off. And Rosenthal and Sir Lynn John Jay's old spot. I like that guy. Blues jacket, Cardinals hat. There's Shane Robinson. So Chevy called the bullpen. Big moment in this game, Trevor Rosenthal bringing the heat. And it gets away from the catcher, Molina. Both runners are going to advance on that high fastball from Rosenthal. That is not going to help the cause. Wow, pitch just took off at 97 miles an hour. Molina couldn't harness it. Now the infield in. Cardinals trying to cut the run off at the plate. Two to two, top of the seventh. There's the infield. Wet grass. I thought one of the top strikeout relievers in the game. Good swing, good pitch. And this is one of those situations where if you're an infielder, Al, make sure of the grip. Big gap in left center. Tabata one for three with a single. Key moment in this game. The one-two pitch to him. Curveball just misses. And that breaking ball at 87 miles an hour. That's a hard breaking ball. Almost a cutter. And the 2 2. That misses the inside corner at 97. Let's try another corner. Appearance number 13 for Rosenthal. He's thrown a lot of innings out of the bullpen in the early going, almost 13. And a big batter here. Fastball fouled straight back on a good cut. 97, but it's like Tabata is pretty well locked into it. If he threw him the perfect changeup right now, Tabata would need to go see a chiropractor. I'm not you, saying he but should. If you lost the game on that changeup. Oh. He wasn't expecting that, I'll guarantee you. The Pirates are getting tired of getting hit. Marte got hit twice yesterday. He's gotten hit five times on the year. And this time it's Tabata right in the ribs. For mm. Full count. Game on the line. The last thing you're expecting is to get one in the rib cage. Oh. 96, you have very little time to get out of the yeah. way, too. Makes it well. I mean, right there, you turn one way, you get it in the back. You turn the other way, you get it in the stomach. It's like you can't get out of the way of it. It's a great look on our replay, by the way, the face of Tabata. Now you got to contend with Andrew McCutcheon. Inning getting away from the Cardinals. Fastball, ball one. 
Very tough man to double up, but the Cardinals are back in the middle of the infield. Craig on the right side is going to try to cut the run off at the plate if it's hit to him. And the pitch. Ball two. Yeah, I think he's going to come out, so is Derek Lilliquist, is Rosenthal. Digging the hole deeper, ball behind the count. Comes a little more predictable. I, I heard the word relaxed and relax in there, which I think is not a bad word for Rosenthal. There are times where he gets a little fast in, in his delivery, Al, and he's he rushes towards the plate, and he's got such great velocity, and really all of his pitches are, are, are plus pitches and Sometimes you just have to kind of trust that and let your let your body just be a little bit more relaxed and, and free and easy and easy to say but tough to do. You get amped up, guys on base, try to throw the ball through a through a wall. Exactly right, but somebody is throwing as hard as he does. A lot of clubs are making contact at oh man. Hitters are batting over 300 against him. He's given up 16 hits in 12 plus innings. Does have those 17 strikeouts and he's looking for more. The 2 1 to McCutcheon. Swing and a miss. He throws that one by him at 96. So far, words of wisdom of Derek Lilliquist uh, produced a couple of strikes. When you are relaxed and just free and easy, the ball jumps out of your hand and has great life to it. You have to throw a fastball here, don't you? Get beat with it, so be it. A little late on that swing is McCutcheon, and certainly he's going to be looking for a fastball. 0 for 3 so far. Aces full of pirates. It's a good fastball hitter, but is he a great fastball hitter? Slipped. Not even able to pick that ball as Rosenthal slipped on the mound. Actually caught his foot, his back foot, and I think that was meant to be a fastball. I don't think that was a curveball. Oh, I agree. I agree. And he just loses his footing, and there's the grip, the four seam grip. His foot catches right about there, and he just kind of pulls the ball right into the ground out. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what happened. And then Yachty is able to pick it. How did he catch that? Now it's 3 2. Strike out. Line drive, double play. Up down the right field line. It's headed towards the seats, and it reaches about the fifth row. I'm going to say it pop up at the infield. I'll take that. I take a line drive double play. You know, well, that definitely. Here's part of the problem, too. If you are one of the goals here would be now that you've got the two strikes is to strike him out. The best way for him to strike him out is to elevate the pitch up out of the strike zone and get it to chase it. But if he takes it, it's ball four. The payoff pitch just misses. And McCutcheon walks, and it drives in the go-ahead run, and it's 3-2 Pittsburgh. McCutcheon, with a very good eye at the plate, takes ball four. You say, how do you take that pitch? It is a ball, and it's a lot slower than I ever thought. Sure was. Yachty did a nice job of framing that. So more work to do. Garrett Jones, that ball gets away from Yachty and bounces right back to him. What a break, and Trevor Rosenthal missed his spot there by a good three feet. One, how did it not hit the left-handed batter? Two, you get the perfect carom. If that's a little bit to the left, it hits off that sideboard, doesn't bounce back like that. Now Yachty goes out to talk to Rosenthal, and I think they're trying to get the action and the bullpen That's sped Salas. up a bit. That's Fernando Salas. You mentioned. 
And I think this is designed to kind of give Rosenthal a breather, but also give Salas a chance to get ready. And you're hoping you don't have to bring him in. Not that he's not capable of getting the job, but you want to see Rosenthal. Did not see this inning coming, Al. And I don't think Mike Matheny did either. Of course he did. But he believes in his players. 2 0. Oh. The reality is that you know, Rosenthal hasn't been that successful this season. This eighth inning. It's the seventh inning here that he's, but I mean, normally it's the eighth inning, and now he can't throw a strike. Rosenthal slipped earlier, and he may have slipped on that pitch as well, and it may be what Mike Matheny's talking about here. Look at all the mud built up on his back shoe. Well, he has the right to ask the grounds crew to come out here and manicure the field. That's what they're going to do right now. And that's not even close to being an excuse for what we've seen from the Cardinals pitching this inning because we've had six plus innings of very good pitching for both starters. A.J. Burnett for the Pirates and Jake Westbrook for the Cardinals and it's been under pretty tough situation and you got to find a way to overcome that but right now the Cardinals bullpen just struggling here in the seventh. And you can see the amount of mucked up dirt and everything and mud kind of accumulated there. That's what they used for the pitchers to clean their spikes and just looking at it you can see how ineffective it really is. Is that something that Trevor Rosenthal is an older pitcher been around the game 10 years won't have to wait for his manager to ask for that, but he'll sense that and realize that hey, I can I can ask myself. You just don't normally see the manager right. as the one that calls that. Yeah, it's almost like he was asking that, hey, I want to do an injury appearance, not charge, not be my second visit because Derek Lilliquist went out once. But Go to the talk to the umpire, and then it looked like Mike requested that the, they work on the mounds a little bit. Now he wants Rosenthal to throw. Let him throw a couple, and that would not be a bad idea. And I, I don't think this is gamesmanship by Mike Matheny, but it certainly accomplishes a couple of goals. Out gives Rosenthal a chance to throw a little bit more, maybe get comfortable, and gives Salas a chance to get loose in the bullpen. And also the ground screw will take the time also to clean up uh, home plate a little bit. Put some of the drying agent there. And the umpires always will be accommodating because they don't want to see anybody get hurt. Already had three runs on three hits in this inning. A couple of walks and a hit by pitch. First it was Joe Kelly in relief of Jake Westbrook. See, I think this is very valuable for Trevor Rosenthal just to try to get a feel. Maybe get it back. He said just stop him for a minute just to kind of regroup. His release point was way off there in the first three right. pitches to Garrett Jones. And the base is loaded in a 3-0 count. Well, we'll see if it helps him. 40,909 paid to see this ball game here this afternoon. And the 3-0 pitch is a strike right down central. Three and one. And we'll see if that lasts. See what if he just aimed that. That was 94. Another strike. This one fouled back. That one 95. So Rosenthal pumps a couple of strikes in. And we're back to that full count. He just missed low to Andrew McCutcheon to walk in a run. There's your Pirates. Marte, Tabata, and McCutcheon. Jones, the 3-2. Ground to the right side. Descalzo boots it, and he's going to have to just get one. So the Pirates pick up another run on a 
Taylor made double play, and Descalzo couldn't get the handle on it. And he scampered to at least get one. That was a better than even shot at getting a double play. Oh, he comes here and he's trying to work a little too far. So that ball had a high hop on it. He's trying to turn before the ball really got into his glove, trying to get to second relay to second base as quick as possible. Then he almost threw it away when he went to to first. Brandon Inge. And again, you wonder about the slick feel of the baseball. And that goes both ways. Pirates have to throw the same baseball in the bottom half of the inning. All four runs this inning to this point are charged to Kelly. Hop fly down the right field line. Long way to come for Beltron, but he makes the play on the run. It mercifully, the top of the seventh ends. Time to stretch. I think we need it. Score. Not a lot of hits from the Cardinals and distributed up and down the lineup. Yadier Molina with a double here, the only extra base hit for St. Louis. RBI single for Pete Cosma was big at the time. It gave the Cardinals a 2 0 lead, but the Pirates with a four run top of the seventh in support of their starter, A.J. Burnett, who gives way to the left hander, Tony Watson. That's a Chevy call of the bullpen. Watson, we've seen him in the past. He's been with Pittsburgh. Came up in 2011. All last year, he's at the big league level with a 5 and 2 mark, 68 appearances. Here he's appearing for the 12th time. One nothing record, 3 point ERA. And remember, the Pirates have a very good bullpen and a tough closer in Grilly, 9 for 9 and save opportunities. 91 mile an hour fastball backs Shane Robinson off the plate. 1 and 0. Robinson at 150, not on track yet. Outstanding spring training, however. And really earned a spot on this team. And he takes a strike. And Robinson, a very helpful guy to have around. Runs well, plays all the outfield positions. He led the team with 11 pinch hits. Last season. So it's one of those cases, Al. You come to the ballpark, you always hope that you're in the lineup and you check the board and you're not in it. 
you're in a different hitting group, but here you are hitting in the bottom of the seventh in an important leadoff spot. You just have to be ready. It's a lot easier these days with the batting cages that are down right underneath the dugouts. Secondary pitching, uh, secondary hitting coaches like Benji Molina are down there. If the guy wants to take a few swings, he can throw batting practice to him, wants to do drills with the batting tee or soft toss. It can stay loose down there and you don't see it. John Mabry talking about how a year ago you were only allowed six coaches. Now there's a seventh so that assistant hitting coach can now actually sit in the dugout the first few innings. But last year, Mabry, when he was doing that role for the Cardinals, basically he's under that tunnel for nine innings. I mean, it's a long day for those guys trying to keep the bench players ready. And ball four to Shane Robinson. Good start for the Cardinals here in the bottom of the seventh as they try to catch the Pirates. The locks are not a good idea when you're getting late into a ball game. Cardinals have the 2 nothing lead. Pirates get the four runs in the top of the seventh. And forget this is just a two-run game. It just those four runs took a lot out of the energy out of the fans. No question about it. Tough inning to watch, frankly. Carpenter hits lefties well. Fakes a bunt, takes a strike. Hopefully that was just to see what the life of a ball looks like thrown from Tony Watson. Don't think we're trying to sacrifice here. You wonder if bunting for a hit wouldn't be a bad idea, as they say Carpenter went, considering the wet grass is wet. Well, I understand that, but I mean, it's one thing I'm looking at Alvarez, and he was playing in guard against it. So it's not like you're trying to trying to surprise somebody when they're playing and defending against it. I'd rather have him hit one out left center and run all day. Big gap. Quick pitch. Outside, one and two. Cardinal third baseman Carpenter in that leadoff spot here today. Well, we see Carpenter hang in there tough against left handers. Not bailing with his front shoulder. Just trying to stay in there closed up and hit it to left center. David Freeze available on the Cardinals bench. Look at the Pirates defense straight up in the outfield for Carpenter that left center field gap. That's where Al wants the ball to go. The 2 2. Grounded foul. Nice crowd here last night over 40,000 here tonight. Big giveaway weekend. Replica ring. Alan Craig bat day to day and tomorrow the Carlos Beltran bobblehead. Tony Watson, quite the pitcher, high school pitcher in the state of Iowa. The 2 2, fouled off. He had Shane Robinson going back to the bag. He's trying to figure out his move. And we've had a number of fans that have decided to go for cover and take off, but quite a few have hung on through some tough weather here this afternoon. Watson, 29 and 9 in his high school career, fanned 613 batters. That was the most since a guy named Kyle Eldred. How about that? Opt into left field. Back goes the third baseman and. Going to make the play in foul territory. That's Alvarez.
Carlos Beltran. Homered for both sides of the plate here in game one, a 9 1 Cardinal victory where the Cardinals had 13 hits and they've managed just five here this afternoon, and Beltran has one of them. Five hits a lot better off of A.J. Burnett, but not enough. Just how good was Jake Westbrook? I was just thinking the same thing. Jake won't be involved in the decision of this one. Sepchinski is warming up. He'll be the next Cardinal pitcher. Don't need to send Rosenthal back out there and burn it any more pitches from him. Swinging a miss. Beltron had two home runs off of Burnett in that game we talked about last May. Here's the swing of Beltron and he was also the 2000th strikeout victim in the career of A.J. Burnett. And that came when the Cardinals were in Pittsburgh. The 0 2 to Beltron is low. Alvarez guarding the line on the left side of the infield, trying to keep. Doubles from happening. That's why they do it. And you can get a nice discussion going with baseball people about the merits of guarding the line, Al. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it. You'll see somebody that. Don't have their glove. Side, you know, say that be a first baseman. That's a right hand, had that glove, and he's really like he's protecting the line. He could catch every foul ball. There's a call third strike on the inside corner. Beltron asking whether that was inside or not. I'm not sure what his answer was, but our answer is it may have been inside. So it's up to Matt Holliday in the Cardinals seventh inning. Trying to get some of those runs back. Four run Pirate seventh. Cardinals trailing by two. Matt's, Matt's been pretty quiet today. Time for him to explode. Game with one swing of the bat. Watson throws pretty good. Good fastball. Yeah, he kinda, yeah he's got pretty good stuff. He slings the ball up there. People look comfortable batting against him. From the belt. Off speed pitch out in front of that one is Matt Holliday. You know, down in the count one and two. This ball in that 92, 93 mile an hour range, range with sinking action. Shelby Miller and Jeff Locke are pitchers in the final game of this series tomorrow. Cardinals hoping to win this series with a victory today. Six game homestand. Three against the Pirates, then the Cincinnati Reds in town before the Cardinals head out again. Good average against left handers, not a lot of production, but it's still early.
fielders got some friends and sitting in the front row of the stands wants to talk to him. Another call third strike again on the inside corner holiday doesn't like the call. Watson retires the Cardinals in the seventh Cardinals trail by two. On a foggy afternoon in St. Louis. Jake Westbrook, an outstanding start. He gave way to Joe Kelly, then Trevor Rosenthal, and now our Chevy called to the bullpen, the left hander Mark Zepchinski. Preparing for the eighth time, ERA just under five, seven and a third innings. Strikeout per inning, a couple walks. Opponents are batting. Twenty three against Zepchinski. That'll come down as the season goes along. Pirates have out hit the Cardinals nine to five here this afternoon. And it's time for our AT&T U-verse rewind. AJ Burnett six solid innings. He's in line for his second victory of the season. Russell Martin a two run home run in the seventh inning off of Joe Kelly a big hit in this game. And we mentioned a very good job of Jake Westbrook. Six innings, no runs, no walks, and six strikeouts for Jake. Zepchinski, first pitch grounded to the right side. Nice play by Descalzo. Very nice play to get Alvarez. That's the type of defense we expect from Descalzo. Not an easy play, and he made it look quite easy. One pitch, one out, just the way you like it. Ranging far to his right, off balance throw. Had something on it. A lot of people think that, okay, you're second base, you don't have to have a good throwing arm. But there's a lot of plays like that where your momentum's carrying you towards the outfield. You've got to reverse fields and throw. And there's a lot more times that you need your arm strength than people realize. You said it well, Al. Russell Martin really took the air out of this crowd with his home run last inning off of Joe Kelly. And he gets to bat again here in the eighth inning on a pitch that really we didn't think was that bad a pitch. It was middle away, down just above the knees. Showed good power the other way. Yep. Not very big. Now he's showing good power to left as this ball gets past Holiday and goes to the wall. So Russell Martin double gives the Pirates an opportunity here in the eighth. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals 
It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Clint Barmas two for three, scored a run in that seventh inning. Base hit off of Joe Kelly and later scored. Ball in the dirt, and Yachty's sure been busy the last couple of innings. The Cardinal relievers have had a hard time with their command. We saw it with Kelly, then we saw it with Rosenthal. Two and oh. Rick Horton with Al Raboski and Jim Hayes and Pat Paris, of course, with the pregame and postgame coverage. And we're glad you're with us here this afternoon. The 2 0 pitch just misses the outside corner, 3 0. And Gabby Sanchez in the on deck circle. He will hit for. Tony Watson, who pitched a clean seven. You mentioned out this bullpen anchored by Jason Grilly, who was nine for nine in saves, and the Pirates just keep kind of developing closers, don't they? Yeah, they do. And Ed Grilly, who was a setup man last year, traded their closer, Hanrahan, and Grilly assumes that end of the game status. Before that, it was Matt Caps. Cardinals starters versus their relievers so far this season. Home runs allowed, earned runs allowed. And Boy, a lot at, more earned runs in a lot less innings pitched. Not a good sign. Cardinal bullpen 0 for 4. They're going to be. We're on the losing side of this one, and Sowles will be coming in. Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. And by Ford, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. 4-2 Pirates, top of the eighth inning. And more trouble for the Redbirds here in the eighth. And that brings in Fernando Salas. He replaces Mark Zepchinski, a couple runners aboard. With just one out, he's our Chevy call to the bullpen. Still a 4-2 ball game. This is still here for the retaking if you want it. 
Does it feel like 10 to 2 or is it just me? It does. And funny thing is you thought when it was a 2 nothing Cardinal lead it was a secure lead. And Joe Kelly did. Ran into trouble Rosenthal piled it on. Zipchinski only gets one out on a hard hit ball to second. Gabby Sanchez. Ball gets away from Molina and one runner will advance. That's Russell Martin. He scampers to third. So another wild pitch. Barmas not able to get a good jump off of first as that ball squirted away from Yachty. Tried to block it. We've seen him do it so many times today and it just. Pushed off to the third base side and Martin read it well. And with one out, that's a big RBI sitting out and insurance run sitting out there for Gabby. The 2 0. Swing and a miss. Big swing by Sanchez. Cardinal infielders are in. Sanchez has nine RBIs in his last 15 at bats. Hit three home runs in his last eight games. Martin and Barmas the runners. 4 2 the score. Salas. Delivers strike two to Gabby Sanchez. A little off speed pitch that. Caught him guessing. And now Fernando's going to have to come up with another one. A couple of years ago, Gabby Sanchez was right in the middle of the RBI leaders with the Florida Marlins. And last year, he just had a horrible year. The 2 2. Breaking ball is hit into left center field. Shane Robinson on the move and this is going to score another pirate on the sacrifice fly by Gabby Sanchez. As Russell Martin scores and it's now five to two. Wild well, pitch. Well, pitch came back to hurt. Salas the Cardinals. Those little things Al, just that difference of 90 feet. Yeah, breaking ball right there. Went down and got it, lifted it up with a sack fly. That run charge to Zipchinski. Popped up. Out of play behind home plate. Molina gives it a look. And it's up to Fernando Salas really to stop the bleeding here. Late in this game and give the Cardinals a chance. The Cardinals still with two opportunities. They'll have Craig Molina and a pinch hitter in the bottom of the eighth, but plenty of time, plenty of outs left in this game for the Cardinals, but you just can't give up anymore. On the bullpen, less than the last two innings is giving up five earned runs. Not blame for a lot of them down there. Now to come back. The bullpen will be 0 and 5 with an ERA over 5. Swing and a miss, and Salas gets Marte. More damage done. Bottom of the eighth. 5 2 Pittsburgh.
Fox Sports Midwest. Let's go to Pat Paris. He's in our studio with this Bomberito Sports Update. Pat. Thanks, Pat. Looking forward to you and Jim Edmonds breaking down today's game and our postgame show and our Chevy call to the bullpen. This is the former Astro, former Red Sox, Mark Melanson, who's off to a very good start this season in the Pirates' bullpen. Wherever he went to the Red Sox from Houston, wasn't he supposed to be their closer and had his problems? But those that look like closing numbers there 0.69 ERA and 13 innings of work. And this is appearance number 14 for Melanson, which is second most in the National League. So he's been busy too, and he'll have a very important inning. Alan Craig, Yadier Molina, and a pinch hitter for Fernando Salas. Cardinals need to start chipping away right now. Alan Craig has really been a cardinal killer in his career. Came into play today with a 362 career average against the Pirates. 0 for 3 today. Craig with really good numbers last year. Again, no homers yet this year. Nice to get one on his bat day. Wouldn't that be nice? Sure would. That will help his war too, Al, which I know you being a sabermetric guy in the pregame show know it all about war. Yeah, you heard Jason Mott's uh, Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly's uh, interpretation of it, right? Called it a card game. Well, yeah, the one, whoever puts down the highest card wins the war. Wins above replacement. Line drive fair. Down the left field line, Craig rounds first. He's thinking about two, and no throw there. Alan Craig gets the Redbird started in good fashion here in the eighth inning. Good thing he didn't throw right there. A little treacherous track. I'm sure the ball was quite wet when it got out to Marte, but Alan Craig was chugging along too, and probably would have been thrown out going into second. But he turns on this pitch and just rifles it down into the corner goes off the side wall and Marte got it quickly and he loads up on this one and then explodes to the baseball got to get a hit on your back day it's a rule way to go Alan Craig that brings in Yachty and the Yachty chance start and Lanson when 2011 when he was with Houston he had 20 saves 8 and 4 record 278 ERA then last year with Boston just one save in the American League 0 and 2 620 ERA and now he's setting up for Grilly and 2 on Molina Yachty's one for three, doubled leading off the second inning, and he's flown out twice. And that's how the Pirates defended. Way off the line at first base is Gabby Sanchez. Wigginton in the on deck circle. Mitchell Bog throwing in the bullpen. In the dirt and scampering to get it is Russell Martin. Alan Craig 
at that secondary lead and if that ball would have gotten a little further away he would have tried to advance but made the right decision and stayed in the dirt behind home plate. John McDonald in at second base. Sanchez stays in the game at first base. That's the right side of the infield. And that's where Yachty hits the ball a lot. Time is called. Two two to Yadi Molina. Hit to the right side. McDonald gobbles it up and throws to Sanchez. And a productive out brings Alan Craig to third base. Outs are precious, however. I don't think you can afford to give away too many outs. No, you can't. Ty Wigginton will hit four. Fernando Salas. The Cardinals have a rookie looking for his first plate appearance. Jermaine Curtis was recalled yesterday. David Fries and Tony Cruz also available on the Cardinals bench. RBI opportunity for Ty Wigginton. Swinging at the first pitch, he fouls it back. Good cut there. In on his hands a bit. Coming off that bench. Time you can really criticize someone is if you take pitches. You have to be aggressive. Cardinals got Wigginton for just this type moment. Rounded to the left side, and it is a foul ball. Says the third base umpire, Tim Timmons. So everybody's going to have to go back. Wigginton to the plate, and Craig to third. Reason why you take your lead in foul territory. Ball hits you, you just soar. You're in fair territory. Ter fair territory, you're out. Better to be sore than out. Yeah. Easy for you to say. No, it's quite difficult. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're the runner, though. <laughs> Not picking on you, Al. I'm just. Oh, I was just helping you. Okay, thank you. I need all I can get. Cardinals need help too from Ty Wigginton. And the pitch. It's a call, third strike, and Wigginton is caught looking. The Cardinals will now have to rely on Pete Cosby. And was this a strike? 0 2 was the count. He thought it was outside, and Ty Wigginton was right. But a little close to take. Yeah, both clubs have had uh, their share of disagreements with their home plate umpire Mike Winters today. But how far Gabby Sanchez is off the line at first base. I'm having a hard time understanding the purpose of that. No, and seen he did a few balls to the right field. Mitchell Boggs throwing, Mojica, in case you tie it up. 
just backed up about four steps from where he was. Right. He was almost in on the grass before. And I wonder on a ground ball to short how easy he's, is it going to be for him just to get to the bag to cover it. Pirates moving, all, Pirates were moving all over the place on that particular delivery. Barmas went three more steps to his right. Now Sanchez backing up more. You playing games with Pete Cosma here? That looked awfully close to the same pitch that Wigginton got rung up on. One and two to Cosma. Craig the runner at third. And the pitch in the dirt blocked by Martin. Cosma 317 hitter. Adding here at Bush Stadium. And if you think your TV is not clear today, it's not your TV. It's the day at the ballpark here at Bush Stadium. Very foggy day. A lot of moisture in the air. We have had a little bit of rain. Cardinals trailing by three here in the eighth. Lost the arch. Coming stole it. There you go starting rumors out, but I can't see it either. Well, I'll, I'll bet it's back there on a clear day, but the arch is gone. Can we draw it? Thank you. I feel better now. Don't take my arch. Oh, I saw it on the grass. RBI opportunity for the Cardinal shortstop facing Mark Melanson and the pitch is <laughs> somewhere not in the strike zone. Pretty a little bit good pitch. down and away. Very good eyes by Cosby. Melanson showing a nice little short slider or cutter down and away from right handers. Doesn't have to be big. Actually, the shorter it is, the better it is. 3 2 the count. Line drive down the right field line, and it's going to slice out of play. Nice to have Jim Edmonds back. He'll be on the post game show with Pat Paris. Jim does such a great job. So good to hear from him. So good to have him part of the Cardinal family. You're never really out of it, but just on a day to day basis now, back with us at Fox Sports Midwest. And just really appreciate Jimmy and what he's bringing to our post games. The 3 2. Foul back again. And I can't help but think that uh, if this game goes long enough, Jim will came back for <laughs> not to do the post game. We could be sending it to the Blues. Could happen. Well, we're hoping for a Cardinal rally here late. Send it to extra innings. Why not? Then the Blues win. We're all happy. Ground ball left side. Barmas is going to have to hurry. Cosmo runs well, and he gets it. Clint Barmas, a nice play in the hole. Melanson. Gets the Cardinals out in the eighth. We're on to the ninth.
Game on the post-game edition of Missouri Lottery Cardinals Live. Pat Paris and Jim Edmonds are standing by. A rough seventh for the Cardinal bullpen. They'll break it down. Plus, we'll have Mike Matheny's post-game comments. This is all, of course, time permitting. Mitchell Boggs on to pitch. We send it back to the booth and Rick and Al. Guys, thanks, Cat. Good work as always. Our Chevy call to the bullpen. Mitchell Boggs, another rough day yesterday for Mitch. And really the Cardinal bullpen in general, a rough day today. Trailing five to two, going to the ninth inning. And Mitchell Boggs, Al, a chance to get some more work, hopefully get something positive today. And I think that uh, is going to be the positive of this outing. Still a close ball game. I was watching him warm up. He was doing something that I didn't think he was able to do with his mechanics, and that is pitch successfully on the outer half to a right-handed batter. So let's hope Boxy's got things figured out and can do something good here. Fly ball to center field. In comes Robinson on the move, makes the play. And a good start for Mitchell Boggs, and we all breathe a sigh of relief for that. Oh, absolutely, because the way he's been going, that ball, which should be an out, you make a good pitch, don't get rewarded, would fall in, and then would bounce past the outfielder and be an extra base hit or something. But this is going to be the first of many, many real good and successful outings for Mitchell getting back on track. Good slider from Boggs. Strike one to McCutcheon, and he's facing two, three, and four in the Pirate order. That also be a feather in his cap. Looks a little more downhill in the early going than we saw yesterday, where he was flying open. That's a much better arm angle and a release point from Boggs, and looks very different, at least right now, than what we saw just 24 hours ago. Not even. Those two are watching intently, and they're two of the biggest supporters. That's what he needs right now. A good slider there. So far, quality pitches from Mitchell Boggs. Facing Andrew McCutcheon is 0 for 3. He walked in the seventh inning. And last night after he was sitting in the dugout, he had a little conversation with Mike Matheny, and they're both, you can almost say, like, hey, Skipper, I'm, gonna, I'm getting closer. Get me back in there. Mike was accentuating the same thing to him. I don't care how long you've pitched or played this game or how much success you have there are times when you lose your confidence a little bit and sometimes it's hard to build a guy back up other times it's easy and I think there's more advantages to the Cardinals to build Mitchell Boggs back up and get him feeling good about himself again but well, we saw his upside a year ago Pitch at 94. And he's not really going to get any better not pitching. Correct. You don't, you don't get out of it that way. Time they say, well, we'll give you a mental day off or something. You know what's, what's going on. They just don't want to use you. <laughs> That's the first pitch that he's come out of his delivery on that pitch there. He spun with the top part of his body. His arm dropped and. That was more the delivery we saw yesterday, so still a work in progress. 2 0 facing John McDonald, his first at bat of the game, and 3 0 on the Pirates' second baseman. Slow it up. Get that downhill back. Cardinals will have the Scalzo, Robinson, and Carpenter in the bottom of the ninth.
Two out walk to McDonald. And it'll be Wandy Rodriguez to pinch it. For Melanson, which tells you that Travis Snyder is yeah. not available today. Yeah, they, they do have Michael McHenry. He's their backup catcher. But this is the second starter they've used to pinch hit. One time McDonald for a sacrifice situation. Here, Wandy to swing away. Wandy's only looking about half ready for this at bat, isn't he? Found some batting gloves. Probably did not expect to pinch hit when he came to the park today. Had to go put on shoes. I think his tenny's off. So guys throwing pretty hard. I don't want to get hit. It's cold. And a base hit for Wandy Rodriguez. Are you kidding me? Sticks the bat out. Hits the ball the other way and a couple more base runners and the teammates of Wandy Rodriguez pretty excited for him. Cold day like this, you kind of wonder, you, you, know, you see Boggs like, well, still snake bit a bit, but try to keep positive. But, you know, on a cold day, you'll get a little worried about one of your pitchers swinging too hard. Especially when they're cold. Yeah. Pull a I mean, not, rib cage or not something. Loose. Even your legs. Trying that instant acceleration out of the batter's box. Pedro Alvarez. Been very good against the Cardinals. Couple of hits today. Had a sacrifice fly to score the only run that the Pirates scored in game one of the series. So you Here's got the runners. He got excited because he saw Cardinal pitching, you know, last week or ten days ago. Splitter from Boggs. He waves at it. One and two. And that was really a power pitch for Mitch a year ago. That splitter sure. really had good command of it. Got a lot of outs with it. Sometimes pitching behind the count so much you can't use it. Tried it again there and came off of it a bit. Two and two. McDonald. And Rodriguez, the runners. Ground ball to the right side. It's foul. And we'll do it again. We saw some signs of the Cardinals' bullpen problems getting better at the end of the road trip, Al. They had a period where there were nine straight innings out of their bullpen that were scoreless. Yeah, that Washington series, the bullpen was great. Popped up on the left side. Carpenter looking for the ball, having a hard time seeing it. Nobody catches it. Carpenter and Cosma both headed for that baseball. You could tell by the way they were both running after it that they did not see that ball very well. And it ends up dropping between the two of them on the left side. To see that coming. Where is it? He said. Yeah, you see him kind of look up like I didn't see it, then he saw it, and then do, couldn't get really to it. Five two Pirates. Mitchell Boggs. Oh. 
Cardinal fans just willing Mitchell Boggs to be able to have a good inning where he can put a zero on that board and feel good about himself. It's not only put a zero on the board, but come up with four runs and make him a winner. Then he can start feeling really good about himself. Four pitches thrown, so hasn't been an easy inning. No. The pop fly, he should be out of this inning, really, or could be. Now he's going to have to come up with a pitch on three and two. The runners will be moving. There they go, and a line drive caught by Boz. That was a bullet off the bat of Alvarez, and Mitch, good for you. Jason Grilly has the ninth. Ninth inning, and Russell Martin has been our Nissan drive of the game the winner here this afternoon with a line drive, two run home run into the right field seats. That was off of Joe Kelly, and that turned this game on a dime. Jason Grilly. Have the ninth. He is the Pirates' closer. Edward Mujica now the closer for St. Louis. Both of them with very little experience saving games prior to this season. Mujica's four for four. Really even better than that. He's nine for nine. And these are guys that have been around a bit. Been around a bit. Paid their dues. Been set up guys or late inning relievers before sweeping the throne of being the closer. And really, last year, you know, he was just so lights out as that setup man. And with Hammerhand behind him, they just really, you know, he had to beat the Pirates in the first six or seven innings before these guys took over. But I'll guarantee you they won't be perfect for the rest of their careers. Fastball up and in on Descalzo backs him off the plate. Cardinals need base runners here in the ninth inning. See, so really, a couple years ago, went to spring training on a mildly contract with Philadelphia, but he had an escape clause. He had a hip injury, and he had an escape clause, and he exercised it, and then signed with the Pirates. Once he was healthy, you know, he was at AAA, and then went to the Pirates, and then he's just been an outstanding pitcher. Since that time. Really seems to have that closer focus, doesn't he? The way he kind of stares into the ground and doesn't really pick up the target at the beginning, just kind of trying to get himself into that little zone. 
Now he checks the sign. And he's got very good stuff to go along with it. And knocks the mask off of Russell Martin. Count stays one and two on Descalzo. Cardinals need base runners because they have an opportunity to get to Beltron and Holiday. Wow. Some guys wear the mask tight, others wear it quite loose, but either way, that looks like it's got to hurt. I would guess so. Big gap in right center for Descalzo, who has walked twice and flown out. One, two, popped up on the left side. Barmas, Alvarez, who wants it? Alvarez Ooh. with a lot of white showing. One out, Cardinals down to their final two. A.J. Burnett is our Budweiser player of the game. Six solid innings for him. One point, it looked like he was going to be another tough luck loss for A.J. Burnett as Westbrook, the Cardinals starter, out pitched him. But in the battle of the bullpens, Pittsburgh's bullpen has been outstanding. The Cardinals proved to be leaky. Shane Robinson came on in the seventh inning, and he walked in his only plate appearance, and he takes strike one from Grilly. Again, way off the line is Gabby Sanchez, the first baseman. Fairly shallow in the outfield for Shane Robinson. Good breaker misses low. One and one. Pirates trying to even the series here with a victory in game two. Line drive to right field. That is down and cut off by Marte. Base hit. For Shane Robinson. And the Cardinals not done yet. One out here in the ninth inning, and they've got a base runner. And the Cardinals still have Tony Cruz, David Freeze, and Jermaine Curtis on their bench. Jermaine Curtis. Just recalled or put on the 40 man roster when they put uh, Ed Adams on the disabled list. Been in the organization about six years. He was from UCLA and was hitting, leading Memphis in RBIs and second in batting average. He's coming up in a key part in this ball game. And they said he'll give you a competitive back. Don't have a good reason why he's hitting for Matt Carpenter, however. I know. Carpenter from the left side, your leadoff hitter, and I have to find out about that later. It may be an issue with Carpenter. Nice applause for Jermaine. Doesn't have a lot of power, doesn't steal a lot of bases, but. Said he's got a lot of leadership qualities and he's earned this right to come up here and have a, a key at bat. And he's got the high Sox Sunday look on Saturday. I like it. Just being prepared. Day ahead. Skip Schumacher's old number. It'd be nice to see a base hit from Jermaine Curtis in his. First at bat in the big league. He takes a strike at the knees, one and one. Curtis was leading the double A league in hitting until Oscar Tavares passed him. Uh, he was second on that Memphis team, but he was leading in RBIs for 17. That was last year. Tavares passed him. From UCLA. Here's how they defend him. Straight up everywhere. Probably don't know him that well. 
One and two the count. Grilly the delivery and it's fouled off. Curtis stays alive. And as you said, really kind of just a good hitter out, good understanding of the strike zone. And John Booch speaking very highly of him yesterday as a good, solid guy to have on a team, too. Talked about his leadership and the fact that he would just mesh well while he was here. Texas League All-Star last year. He needs to get on base to bring up the potential tying run to the plate. Fastball just misses the outside corner at 94. Mentioned out of UCLA is the fifth round selection in the June 2008 first year player draft. Lurking. Sixth professional season. Minor league totals coming into this year 278. 10 home runs, 138 RBIs, 34 steals. The 2 2. Fouled off again by Curtis. He's hanging tough. That's what they said. He'd come up here and give you a competitive bat. Regardless of what happens in this at bat, he's done that already. Been a very good at bat. Nice if it had a good ending. How about a storybook ending? The pitch. Swing and a miss. And Curtis strikes out. Really throws one by him. And the Cardinals down to out number 27. Beltron 0 for 6 in his career against Grilly. I, for one, would like to see Matt Holliday hit in this game. Robinson takes second. Swing and a miss by Beltron. No stolen base. Holiday would represent the potential tying run. He would bat next. Really looking for save number 10 in 10 chances. Shift is on for Beltron. One and two the count. Carlos, one for four today. Two home runs last night, three RBIs. Tell Grilly has an idea. He's been going in and out and yeah. in and out. Change of speeds, the slider, fastball. Side, but seen a lot of close pitches called here today. Line drive to right. Carrying towards the gap, and it's down and to the wall. Carlos Beltran has doubled in the ninth.
scoring Shane Robinson and it's five to three and Matt Holiday will indeed hit in the bottom of the nine. How about that at bat? Down and in just turned on it gets it into the gap. Went track scoots off all the way to the wall and he drives in another run. His 17th of the season. Tough at bat for Beltron. Matt Holiday. Two home runs, 14 RBIs. For five with four strikeouts. And there's that path being worn out again. Yeah. Ray Searge wanting to make sure that Jason Grilly was paying attention during the meeting when they were talking about how they're going to pitch to Cardinal hitters. He hasn't forgotten since then. Message delivered. Be careful, but don't walk it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. They Strike out you. good, home run bad. Yeah, they get you off the hook. That me. How about don't give me anything good, but don't walk. Big swing by Holiday. He fouls it straight back. Good cut there. Didn't miss that by much. No, he did. Always considered Holiday a low ball hitter. That ball was up, but he had a good level swing at it. Cardinals trying to battle back here in the bottom of the ninth, trailing by two. Ground ball to short. Barmas has it. And across the diamond in time to get Holiday, and the Cardinals drop game two of the three game series here, Al, with the Pirates. Well, don't forget the great pitching by Westbrook. That's a real plus, but of concern is that bullpen once again. AJ Burnett. The winner, Joe Kelly, the loser. Cardinals drop game two here, five to three. Post game show is coming up next. <laughs>